Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcast episode four. How are my three actual favorite players in the world doing today? I'm doing, doing good. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm so fucking tired, and I can't solve today's New York Times connections puzzle. I'm so fucking stuck. I can't do it, and now it's D&D &D time, so I can't keep working on it. And when I come back to it, when I'm done with D&D, &D, the clock's gonna have ticked over to the next day, so I'm not gonna be able to finish the puzzle. What the fuck am I supposed to do, Neil? Well, I have a consolation prize for you. What is it? Starting tomorrow is the competitive geo-guessing tournament. Oh, shit. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the world championship? Seltzer I'm not sure where in the placement it is of that. I, I don't know much about the organization, but my friend Seltzer Please uh, is going to be the host for it. And so I've got it bookmarked on my calendar. Um, so if you're interested nice. in competitive geoguessing, that's cool. I am wow. actually very much into competitive geoguesser, yes. Yeah, that's, that's why cool. it's a consolation prize. <laughs> so uh, Potato McWhiskey cannot be with us today, unfortunately. And that's he fine. has passed tragically in his sleep last night. It was very painful. Uh, he died of AIDS. <laughs> painful in his sleep, AIDS. <laughs> wow, what what a combination right there, buddy. What a way to go. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna play without him, and he's just gonna fall ever behind in the XP curve. Isn't it beautiful? Uh. So, where last we left the party. We had come back to the swamp, I believe. Yep. In fact, let's get some swamp sounds. Here we, we go. Uh, oh, Peachel, as the only non-boomer here, do you want to do the recap? Uh, you know what? I think I'll leave it to the actual only non-boomer here in Mr. Mooton. Okay. Yeah. You know what, Nick? I think you did such a good recap <laughs> last time, but I'm going to let you do it this time. Oh, really? Okay. But we'll see how you do. I'll try and be quick. I'll try and be quick. Okay, so um, we picked back up uh, in the forests on the way back to the swamp, having just killed the orc and traveled for a little bit beyond that. You know, we were traveling through, down the road, eventually found our way to the edge of the swamp where we decided to break for the night. There was uh, another group of people there, just sort of randoms and some guards that I think we're escorting them through the wilderness. And uh, yeah, we had a bit of chit chat. We made camp. When randomly, a halfling, a well armed halfling, um, crawled out of the water of the swamp to our camp. And luckily, I was away from the camp at the time and declared that she was looking for me. She had a, a wanted post with my face on it. And it was very tense. I stayed hidden. Um, Garp let me know that the person was there for me, and Garp, you know, took things into his own hands, grabbed the halfling when no one was looking, jumped into the swamp, and proceeded to uh, drown her in the swamp using his water breathing, quite viciously and effectively, killing the halfling and ending our problem. Um, after which, the next morning, we made our way through the swamp, back to Autumn's Tower, where we uh, got our 108 gold, as promised. We relaxed for a few days. There was some nice role playing. And then we got our next quest from Autumn, which was to um, replenish some ingredients that she'd, you know, used up her last stock of or had ruined, I think she might have said. So mm -hmm. we need to travel to a nearby town and buy some of these ingredients for her. She said that she usually gets them from the city, but they're too expensive or something like that, Neil. Yeah, there's this dealer. There's this magic shop um, in Swampside. And magic is sort of a rare thing to begin with. And people who settle down and open up like stores to steal magical components and supplies are, are even rarer. Um, because, well, there's some money in it, but there's also a lot of visibility in it. And like, usually if you're gonna be a mage, you probably don't want to be running a shop all day long. Like that's not your goal. So the crossover of people who are magically empowered and who want to run a shop is like a pretty narrow margin. So these places are pretty rare. Um, so there's kind of one in the local region and it's over in Swampside. And because there's one in the local region and everyone's got to buy their components from there, uh, they can kind of jack up their prices however they want. And apparently this person has been 
setting very high, unreasonably high for Autumn's taste prices for things that shouldn't be that, you know, when you're selling like crushed fireflies for a gold, a handful, and you're like, but they're literally just, you could just pay a child to go catch some fireflies fire, 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 fire. for like a couple of copper. What why the fuck? doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. Um, if it were that easy now. If it were well, that easy, we would just pay a child. It would be that easy. Uh, but if you're a wizard and you don't want to like walk around asking children to buy fireflies to argue over the difference between a gold and a couple of mm -hmm. copper, like you'll just show up to the shop and just get the fireflies and go and pay the extra money and kind of grumble about it. Like, you know, if you wanted to get some potatoes for your house, you could go down to the shop and buy some potatoes or you could grow like infinite potatoes for practically free in a bucket in your backyard. You know, you just toss a potato in there and apply water. Potatoes are hardy and prodigious producers basically free to make but yeah. you know, you so just silly to Neil. some magical plant that grows on its own <laughs> i know so. it's ridiculous uh, uh, wacky we're dm Roll 20 audio or something we're not getting the the soundtrack yeah you're able to restart it and do it again hopefully oh, it yeah. should be uh should be fine so neil let's come in then uh, i would like to ask Otto a little bit more about what exactly this reagent is that she's looking for, uh, you know, and where exactly she wants us to go to go and get it. Yeah, well, she wants you to come to this shop in Swampside. Um, it's did I give it a name last week? I don't think so. It's sorry, Swampside is the town, the first town we went to, or a different one. No, no, the first town is Keygate. That's right. So yeah. if we go to our our little really crude map while the Wait, no, hold on. I have things on this crude map that I can't show you right now. All right, here we go. I'm going to take you to our crude map while the really good map is still in production. Nice. Um, and we're going to say that the tower that you've been hanging out in is that little ugly blue circle, right? Um, that's not even a circle. It's more of like a rectangle. Can I answer uh, then... this crude map? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. You keep going on. Right. So the this blue sucker over here is the tower, Tower Serenity. Um, this town right here is Keygate. It's the it's the the way in and like across the swamp has to pass through Keygate. Yeah. Uh, and then so this is where that like knight was, the level yeah. five guy. Yeah. Uh, and then way down here is the capital of the region. Uh, that is a place named Valebrook. That's where you met Magistrate Zara. Okay. and where you bought the glass and everything. Um, and now you're gonna be headed over here to this side, to a place called Swampside. Swampside. Yeah. Okay. And there's a, you know, like a road that does something like this. Got it. Swampside um, is they've... smaller than Valebrook then. It's smaller than Valebrook, bigger than Keygate. It's the second largest um, town city in this region. I would like to, I might know this, or I would like to ask Automata and we can roleplay it if that's appropriate. But I want to know what the political structure here is. It is Does that Zara lady have ownership of Swampside and Keygate as well? Like, you know, I feel like mm. maybe they're looking for me. I would like to know if they're separate entities or if Balebrook know I was there. Will Swampside know that I'm here as well? That is a great question. Let me just open up my notes because I have all sorts of notes about the political structure of this region. Garp um, is currently with Renatus, who is sick. Oh, and, he's got uh, fever. He don't like worry, him. Renatus. I'll, I'll take care of this. You just you just focus on getting better. If oh, I, you know, I don't know if I'll ever be able to walk again. Sure as hell, it's, it hurts a lot, you know. Okay, we're gonna complete this for you, and we'll bring back uh, the money. I thought you just grunt. focus on getting better. Not solemn. I leave the room. All right. Uh, the political structure of this: there is a, an old family, um, and their family is, the family name is the Horn family, and the, this whole kingdom used to be the Horn Kingdom once upon a time, uh, some time ago. That family did not really accept the oncoming Verasi army. Um, tried to fight them. They thought, hey, we've got this big ass swamp that sort of like guards three quarters of our area. They're gonna have to come across the swamp. Like we're gonna be able to fed. Nope, 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 crushed and destroyed. 
uh, and their capital city used to be called Elmstead. And after the army of Rossi came through, they crushed the capital, they crushed the, the kingdom, they renamed Elmstead uh, Valebrook as sort of like a fuck you, we're, we're renaming your capital city, sort of like a Istanbul, Constantinople thing. Yeah. Um, and so now this former kingdom is still has like its own like you know a new uh, administration has been installed and it's sort of its own independent region and magistrate zara is sort of like the representative of the empire who like keeps an eye on things yeah. but like the kingdom still functions more or less autonomously and then you've got like a few empire minions who like stand around keeping an eye and making sure that everything is like you know that there's no real big problems here so you've got like empire people but then you also have like kingdom people and they're sort of different sure. yeah but but it's... swampside Veilbrook, and keygate are all within the same kingdom anyway so yes yes they would likely to share information and such yeah and as much for for whatever information would be worth sharing between them definitely yeah yeah okay uh Thanks for the information, Autumn. What is this reagent you're looking for? Is it uh, controversial? Do we need to keep it quiet, or should it be? No, it's sold openly in the the shop. You should. Well, as we discussed uh, yesterday, there is a reasonable price to pay for these things, mm -hmm. which is not being charged. And so I was hoping, if possible, if if you're up to it, to um. Pay the reasonable price for these reagents. And she'll hand you a small little list. Um, and it's got, like, you know, crushed fireflies, dead newts. It's got Eye of Bullywug in it. Um, it's got all of these, like, components of living creatures. Like, there's no minerals in there. There's no plants. They're all, like, dead parts of animals. Sure. Um, yeah. Could I do a spellcraft check? to try and work out what I think a reasonable price for these would be. Or maybe Arcanology. I uh, no, Spellcraft would be um, an appropriate role. Yeah. I'm gonna preface this by saying that... Um, Local economies and such. Yeah, like if you live in an area where there's fireflies, fireflies should be dirt cheap. Um, but if you live in an area where there are no fireflies, they're going to be rather expensive, right? One of the, the components I mean, here be. is cock of centaur, and, like, there are no centaurs in the local region, and so that's probably going to be pretty pricey out here. Cock I of centaur. would expect yeah. that, depending on the size of the list, that some stuff mm -hmm. would be further away, some stuff would be closer, and as long as the list is big enough on average, you should still be able right. to make a good guess. Right, right. So give me that spellcraft check. 30. Oh, it's a great spellcraft check. Yes. So going down this list, you're going to estimate that this ought to be somewhere between like 50 and 100 gold, depending on, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Like that's your, your general ballpark. Yeah, okay. So I say to Autumn... Uh, Do you know what spell it is? I think it's multiple spells probably, isn't it? Yeah, this looks more like a list of things that you would need for research. Yeah. If you're going to be doing some sort of like research into life or creatures or like maybe the senses or maybe it's reproduction like there's some sort of living entity research maybe it's necromancy maybe it's like trying to imbue things with other abilities it's kind of hard to know exactly what it could be used for mm. um, mm -hmm. um so autumn this looks like maybe depending on where you are up to a hundred golds worth of components this is a long list what's this uh, guy trying to sell them for Got a quote? Well, the last time uh, I tried to buy fireflies, which honestly maybe a, a couple of silver, um, she was charging gold for fireflies. <clears throat> and last time we were getting newt tail, uh, which you know, newts are small creatures. You can have a whole pile of them. They regrow their tails. Maybe a couple of silver for a, a newt tail. Again. Um, Golds for new tails. Uh, she kind of flips through the list a little bit, looking for something good here. Um, Eye of Bullywug. That might be kind of a hard thing to get. She kind of glances over down the hallway at the Bullywug over here, <laughs> so nearby. Um, you know, 
I could reasonably see Eye of Bullywug going for a couple of pieces of gold, maybe 10 if they're particularly hard to find, but they're fairly local and they're a pest here. And yet last time I tried to buy Eye of Bullywug from her, she was charging 40 gold. For one Absolutely. eye? Absolutely. For one eye? For a set, but still. Do you mind, uh, Autumn, then giving us a list? We've got. I have the list. I have the list here, Gop. No, a list for like future things in the swamp that she might want. When we're out on our adventures, you know, we killed six bullywugs a, a week ago. We could have mm. brought back some eyes. Uh huh. Hmm. Our friend well, Lazarus was in danger. We had other things to worry about than taking the eyes from these bullywugs. I don't know if Renatus is worth. How many did we kill? Six. That'd yeah, be six well. sets. Six times four. It's two hundred forty gold. Well, I can't. I don't have need for that many eyes. Um, I wouldn't eye all of them, you know. I, yes. So I, I, we get. What it, do you think this person will charge for this list? I mean, how much are we trying to lower that price here? Would you be comfortable to pay a hundred gold? Well, as poor dear, um, hmm, hacking his lungs out, Renatus over there was saying, this might be a situation where you liberate the required things and leave 100 gold to cover the cost yeah okay but uh is the shop yeah. owner a wizard yeah yes yes she is a powerful she, one I, love. I mean she's a shop owner she's probably a bit more po educated than you but i wouldn't go out of my way to call her powerful okay stealing from wizards isn't exactly straightforward although i do have some experience in that matter Hmm. I thought you would be perfect for this. Yes. She goes missing. Would anyone notice? Would anyone care? I think Autumn well, would she's care, the only would, yeah. dealer in town in in the region. I would care quite a bit, uh, as would undoubtedly Magistrate Zara and any other spellcasters. Um, this this woman, while frustrating, uh, serves an important role in the local economy. You know, dear Garp. There are many answers to life's problems. Death is very final. Indeed. He shrugs. Uh, thing is, though, this is a long list. Lots of very different things here. Uh, it's not the same as stealing a lockbox or a magic sword. I mean, to pilfer all this from her shop, you know, you'd need to know it well to know where it was all stored, wouldn't you? Or you would need an hour of time. I don't know. I mean, if you can't, if this isn't up to your task, then that's fine. I I, I will take care of it on my own. We, we can handle it. That's fine. I mean, I'm interested in seeing Swampside anyway. I'm just talking through the uh, the details with you, you know, to get an idea. You've already even spent mm -hmm. some time thinking about this. No point in me doing the same thinking again. Hmm. Well... I look over at Garp. Uh, are there? I think that. Are there any? It's a shame that Renatus won't be able to come with us, since uh, he probably has the lightest fingers of all of us. I would say. Old man. Oh sick. well. Martha doesn't bless all of us with good health every single day. Garp will like stroke his head, where he would think a beard would be, and he'll stop. <laughs> it's getting worse. Uh... <clears throat> He never used to be like this, and now in the past few months, he's been sick quite a bit. Hmm. It's not just his body, I fear. His mind might be going as well. Some <laughs> of the things he's been saying on the journey back here were concerning. Well, I'm sure he'll be fine by the time you get back. It's about four days to Swampside, give or take, depending on how quickly you travel. I suppose if you have the... Bullywug with you. It might take a little bit longer with those uh, <clears throat> large feet. Um, he gives her a wink. You know what they say. <laughs> what do feet. they say? Large feet. Walk slow. Yes. How, well, how big is my Bullywug cock? Do I have one? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Can we... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no let's find out. How big is it? Uh, I don't know. We all wanted Why to don't know. You Google what you... frog dick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just tell me what to roll. <laughs> I don't. You decide. <laughs> all right. 
do I'm sure this I'll, one's I'll gonna come up I'll again. Do some, I'll do some research on this. Don't they just sort of like? I don't know. I think um they just sort of the the females lay eggs and then the males just sort of like swim over and just like dump the load on top just, and there is no penis. actual um uh, member. It's actually really because, disturbing watching bullywogs mate. So what'll happen is the female frog will obviously like lay the eggs, but then because the male frog is half human, he actually just like squats over it and just fucking. <laughs> just knock, knock sometimes in the night, the walking around the swamp, you just <laughs> see like a guy slumped <laughs> over. Well, <laughs> frogs his, have his knees cloacas. are like bent, and he's got his <laughs> he's got. <laughs> His arm um, between, oh my uh, God. As long as we're talking about this, frogs have cloacas, which also birds and other creatures, some other creatures have, and that's where the uh, end of the digestive oh, tract oh. is both used for excreting waste and contains oh. the genital products. So you literally just like, since we're getting in, into the weeds here, uh, you literally shit your sperm out your ass and dump it all over the eggs, and that's how you fertilize. Um, so you Based. have zero frog dick. I'm sorry. Uh, to I say. have no frog penis, but it is very smooth down there, and it is the <laughs> finest cloaca you could ever see. That doesn't mean you haven't got genital product, though. What? So we're gonna go to Swampside, yeah. and we're gonna leave this conversation in the <clears throat> swamp. Thank you. My uh, as we go over the list, we're, we're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. As we go over the list and we start our journey, I'll ask uh, the wizard. It, when we get there. I think it'd be wise to maybe see what is a fair deal, mm -hmm. see what we can buy, buy it, and then we can get some of the bigger products ourselves. My concern, I, I don't. My, my concern is if we go in there with this list and we buy some of the things on the list, and then the other things on the list go missing, it's going to be quite obvious who's stolen them. Make another list. I'm, not, I'm also trying to get out of this without stealing from them. If we can go there and we can buy 80% of the products and then venture around and get the other 20%, I think it's a better idea than pissing off the only wizard who sells things in the area. I actually don't know why Autumn is being so fucking stupid. Hmm. What do you think, Grau? And I look over at the man? The bear? No, he's a bear right now. He's looking at you. How do you gonna... feel about stealing, Grau? He's gonna. You're gonna see him turn to a human. It's kind of. It's kind of not nice to see him. Visceral. Yeah. It's a. It's. It feels like you know some bones are being rearranged and shit. Um, and he plops down on the floor as a human. He's like, Autumn's my friend. I trust her. If we. If she says that we should go do a things, and I. I think we should go do the thing. No. What's. what's I mean, I agree. Yeah, but we don't have Renatus. We're not, we're not bona fide thieves here. Just because Renatus got the AIDS and is in in the bed now, uh, doesn't mean that we we, yeah, we 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 are strong. We can we can do things. As yes, he he talks nice and everything, but you both of you are good with the talking with the humans. Huh? Mm. This isn't about talking. This is about stealing. I shrug my bullywug shoulders. <laughs> All I'm saying is, we could not piss off the only wizard who sells components. Maybe it'd be for the best. Well, we'll have time to come up with a plan on the way down there. It's going to take a couple of days at least. Well, you know, Autumn says that if you have uh, feelings about something, you sh sh should uh, go to people and tell them. And instead of, you know, you, it's always good to talk to people about your feelings. Maybe you should tell Autumn that said you don't want to steal from the wizard. Are we like a minute out of the cat of the fucking tower, or are we like a ways? I, I didn't even know you guys had left yet. Yeah, I don't know we've left yet. Although oh, okay. after Grau says that, I will say, if we want to keep doing jobs for Autumn, uh, I'd suggest we just get on with this. I think if we go back and say we've got issues with stealing such uh, you know small products, then she might look for alternative employees. Yeah, and I don't have issues with stealing. My issue is with stealing from the wizard who's probably going to find out it was us and then be hunting us. Mm. You should know better than anyone, Arrakis. You don't want people on your tail. 
Well, you don't I need more enemies, do you? They're already looking for me, friend, so. Well, I'd add another one to the list, I guess. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just get to Swampside and see what the situation is. You know, maybe this uh, wizard's a drunk. Maybe it'll be easy. Ah, <sighs> if they were ugly, Renatus could definitely uh, seduce them. It's too bad he's sick with AIDS. <laughs> I fear not all of the uh, women of this area have such poor taste as the magistrate. <clears throat> I wouldn't know. I've never been with a woman. Nah, uh, you, you do surprise me. God. Planning on saving myself for, uh... <laughs> he... <clears throat> pauses. For, I guess... For, I guess, another fucking frog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I suppose. Well, isn't that what you would, uh... Prefer, anyway? Or do you covet our, our women as well as our homes? I don't know how to explain this to you, so I'm not going to. And he Fair works enough. further ahead of the group. <laughs> That's a really good answer. <laughs> All right. Our party sets out. Um, and it's going to be a pretty easy journey. You know the way through the swamp very well by now. You take your time getting through it. You pull off the leeches. You search for gremlins. Yeah, you I get search. searched for gremlins again at Keygate. You know, mm. I've done this before. You get through Keygate, and you're on the road to Swampside. Actually, before that, as we're coming into Keygate, last week, Grau, you had a conversation with Autumn regarding... I know. I already have this, okay? The meat pies. Mm -hmm. He's gonna get him. He's gonna get. He's gonna get him. Yeah. How, does he have to ask for them, or is this something that you've remembered? This is what I was. I was waiting to get to town, mm. and I'm going to go and get him his meat pies. I was gonna bring it up, but then I got big on the frog cock, and that whole came up. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, uh, we've only just left the tower. Do you really need to go shopping already? Can't you wait till we get to Swampside? Just give me a few minutes. Stay here with the with Grau. I'll be right back. You see the frog waddle away. And he around. comes back. Ten minutes. Well, how long does it take me to get some pies, Neil? Ten minutes. Ten minutes later, he comes back with two gold. How many pies did that get me? Oh, each meat pie costs about a silver. So that's 20 meat pies right there. Yeah. Oh, God, uh, you can see him come back with his 17 strength with a bag. Filled no with 20 meat pies. What kind of meat pies are we talking about? Are we, is, are we talking like steak and kidney or are we talking... He got all of the same one and it was whatever was, you know, on sale. Because he's, <laughs> he's a realist and he doesn't want to spend all his money. Mm -hmm. But he is committing to his piece of the pie, as they would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's pigeon pies. Is it like, you know, like with a gravy or is it kind of like packed like a pork pie? Dude, we can't, we can't keep coming can't into session episode. and then keep talking about food and then making me hungry all session Neil long. Neil literally like... orders chicken tendies. He doesn't know shit, Nick. Okay, I don't know why you keep asking him about food. Chicken tendies are high class cuisine, sir. <laughs> sir. Yes. Um, yeah, Gra's eyes are gonna light up at the sight and the smell of the meat pies. Um, these are all for, for me. For 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 the for the group, this. Yeah, sorry it took me so long. The guy behind the counter was an idiot, <laughs> and uh, he'll uh, start unpacking them uh, for Growl and putting them on the floor in front of him. Hey, uh, <laughs> he just thinks yeah. he's a savage. Growl. So, could I have one? Yeah, yeah. And share food and company. Thank you. Yes. I'll hand you Cheers. one. Cheers. And uh, he's yeah. gonna go in on these fucking meat pies, as many as his human stomach allows him to fucking eat. Mm. However just many that in, is. Like, we're just standing in the middle of town. Yep. Well, our meat friend pies just are being eats unpacked 20 pies. and put on the ground. Yep. Garp probably sits down as people walk past him. Yeah, there's some weirdos. interesting looks as, as uh, 
you know, you're e you're just sitting on the street eating food. But yep. so be it. If anyone stares too long, I flip them off. I give them the flip <laughs> Tell me, tell me about who's staring. Give me their description. <laughs> All right. The first person to openly stare at you is um, a little girl. She's got to be like nine years old. And she's skipping down the streets, going somewhere, <laughs> you know, pigtails flapping in the air. And then she stops because there's a grown hairy man squatting down in the street, eating pies next to a, a frog and like a wizard who's you know, trying to gently eat this pie without making a mess all over his clean robes. And she stops, her jaw drops, the pigtails stop swinging, and she stares directly at the hairy man and the frog, and the hairy man and the frog, and the hairy man and the frog. I give her a wink. You never seen a frog enjoy a meat pie before, little girl? She shakes her head. No. Oh. Well, come on, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> God, the one with the world <laughs> makes us. Uh, she approaches. She seems to be not daunted by the frogman before her. I offer her a meat pie. You offer her one of Grau's meat pies? Friends share food and company. I oh. ask Grau, is it okay if we give the little lass here a meat pie? And share food and company. <laughs> Friends share food and company, I say. <laughs> and I hand over a pie. Please Aww. have a seat. Join us. Uh, she tentatively sits down with you. I thought you were gonna flip off the staring people. All of a she sudden, you're nice. being nice. She mm. wasn't like giving us a bad stare. She was giving us a nice, you know, inquisitive. Mm. What's going on here? How's it going? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. She'll start, you know, picking out the the crust on the top and eating the flaky bits. And um, after a moment, she looks at the frogman and goes, "What's your name?" Uh, my name is Garp. What is your name, little? I'm Grau. Little... I'm from far away. Hello. Gertrude. But my friends call me Gertie. Gertie? Gertie. It's an it's ugly name. Too complicated of a name. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> you have an ugly name. She stops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. My mom says it's a pretty name. Your mom's wrong, so you should go by G. No! Way better of a name. Don't, I, don't listen to the I go and try to take her Gertie. meat pie. You, she's a small child. You can <clears throat> take the meat pie. We, we even Get have an expression. Here. It's like stealing candy from a, a baby. Get out of no. here. Uh, she cries and runs I, off wait, into the streets. Wait, hang on. I, uh, I try and stop him. Not like super yeah, physically, but I just be like, I put out like, what are you doing? Leave her. He stops. Just Goes back to eating. Daddy, pie. maybe go back to your uh, your family. Yeah, We've got to be leaving. She anyway. takes off. <clears throat> What's wrong with you? It's bad enough that you walk around here looking like that. You're going to start interfering with small children. <laughs> what do you mean looking like that? <laughs> what do you think I mean? You're drawing enough attention to us anyway. Let's just keep moving. We don't even have anything to do here. You wanted to eat meat pies too. I was making the most of a bad situation. Okay, this is not my idea of what we should have been doing here. Anyway, I don't want to get drawn into this stupid discussion. Flips you off. Let's keep moving. He holds it there for a while and walks with you. All right. Well, back on the road again. <laughs> it'll take, uh, since we, you know, it'll take a few days to get to Swampside. From the time you leave Serenity on October 3rd, 1521, it's one, two, three, four, five, six days until you arrive in Swampside on October 9th. Um, um, and it's well, just sort of as, well, as we're walking I have a suggestion for maybe what we can do here um, so I was thinking about your plan Garp about maybe harvesting some of these ingredients ourselves what if we go and speak to the wizard and rather than spending all day looking around the swamp for various different things we could offer our services perhaps uh, offer to collect something that is uh, dangerous for her to reduce the price of the bill you are smart. Thank you. You are not as dumb as you look, Arrakis. I'll tell you that. I've said it before, saying it again, and I well, really hopefully do. Hopefully, this time it. you'll remember. Because you look fucking stupid. <laughs> sure, yeah. He I mean, smiles and laughs. Depends on your baseline, I suppose. What do you think, Grau? Oh, this is not the right track. 
Do you think Renatus look, or do you think Rackus looks like an idiot? Uh, I don't know what an idiot looks like. Right answer. You, point. Is it wow. an idiot? Is is <laughs> someone who is not very smart? Right? You can't really look yes. at someone that's not. You can. Can you tell if they are smart? Can you tell if they are stupid? Well, typically, if they're wearing wizard robes, they're usually more intelligent than your average uh, oh. frog. Okay. But a wizard who is expelled and on the run wearing riz- wizard robes, that's an idiot. <laughs> I'll have you know I wasn't oh, expelled. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, Thank okay. you. I graduated. What were you? I've already given you my story. We're back on the road now. You can uh, you can wait till the next time we back at the tower if you want more details. Uh, I can get lore at the tower. Yeah. yeah. But well, uh, You ask me for some lore, I'll tell you next time. But only at the tower. And at the top of the tower. Yeah, you got to be at the top of the tower. What do, you, what do you think then? We go in there, we see what she wants for it, we offer our services to uh, reduce the bill. I think it's a good idea. Um, <clears throat> do you like do it. you think Autumn is going to be okay if we do that? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I Autumn mean, should care. How, has she given us like 100 gold now? Uh, she has given you 120 gold. Yeah, okay. So Is this like 120 gold... Well, sorry. Because this 120 gold could be ours as well. If we steal it completely. If we steal it completely. Like, if we went in there and we just stole every fucking material component, we could keep this 120 gold. Or, if we go and work for the wizard enough, we could just keep the gold and get the bill reduced for free. You know? Stuff like that could happen. Yeah. Um, You know... Autumn seems to want us to pay a fair price. I don't know if we should take all of the gold and steal yeah, everything for free. I think we should probably, like she said, you know, leave the hundred gold, keep the twenty for ourselves. Let's work for the wizard. See if we can get the bill reduced to be a hundred and hundred or hundred and twenty gold. See what they think's fair. I uh, continue I on. Do have another idea as well, and I, I hope the two of you don't take offense to this. But uh, you know, you're both interesting individuals for. Very different reasons. <clears throat> Wizards tend to be curious minds. Perhaps if you, you know, she may be interested in, you know, studying you a little bit. Maybe she'd uh, pay for the privilege. Not a uh, fucking experiment to be what, checked out. What do you mean studying me? Like in, in school? I, I don't know. No, like, you know, watching you... You know, measuring you, weighing you, asking you questions. Mm, no. I understand. I wouldn't mm, want to either. I, I, I'm not a fucking freak show and neither is Growl. I I I just don't want No. 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 Um he's actually gonna react pretty heavily to this and um be pretty upset. are, are we in the middle of town right now? Oh, right. I think this is on the road in between We're towns. On the road. Yeah, he's gonna actually um, feel very uncomfortable and go to bear form. Uh. <laughs> Not like what you did. You got the fucking bear upset. I didn't mean anything by it. It was just a suggestion. Exploring our options. Did you want someone yeah. to study you as like a freak show? I would I think not. That's funny. Then don't suggest it next time. Because now you've just upset us both. Yeah. He'll walk near the bear. Uh, I, I'll walk near the bear, growl. I'll put my hand on you. Sorry about that, you know? It doesn't matter that we're a little different. I'll keep you safe. Alright, uh, so we're going to take... more comfortable. Are you going to say something, Nick? No, just that we keep walking. All right. It's going to take you a few days to get there, um, and there are costs involved. I think we sort of skipped over the costs involved last time, but you have to buy food as you travel. If you stay in inns, which I don't think you're all necessarily staying in inns because that'll increase your travel time if you're just camping on the road, and you all brought camping equipment, um, it'll be cheaper and faster. And I don't think anyone here is too hoity-toity to, like, no. you know, you need a feather bed or something. Um, so it's six days, and it'll cost you each about five Wait, silver a day in food. When we and can stay in an inn, I do. 
Like, if we're in town and we're just going to stay there anyways, I'm going to stay in the nice inn. Uh, usually right. you can get, like, an extra hour or so of, hour or two of travel time if you don't stop in a city. Oh, like, you okay. can get to a town as, like, the sun, you know, when there's a couple hours left in the day, and you could crash out, or you could just try to get to Swampside as fast as possible and, like, camp a few hours yeah, out of town. That's fine. We can, yeah. we can just continue on the thing. Uh, so can everyone chill out 30 silver for the journey to Swampside? I don't think I have any money. 30 silver. S you should have yeah. fifty. You should have money. And I dropped just three gold instead, Neil. Yeah, I dropped That's perfect, three yeah. gold. Yeah, you should have money from the last quest. Did you not add it to your sheet? Um, oh, I might not have. Should have been like twenty-ish gold. No, but didn't Jamie take his gold for him, or didn't you? I gave Jamie my. No, gold. yeah. So you should have twenty-two gold. No, twenty-seven gold. Because it was one hundred and eight divided by four. Which is, yeah. So I should have yeah. 27 gold? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. now you have 24, but... Now yeah. I have 24 gold. Okay. All right. So six days pass. We get to Swampside. Swampside is a uh, sort of a bustling little cozy town on the edge of a swamp. Um, it's kind of got this like backwoodsy feel. It's mostly dirt roads. You've got some, you know... Uh, relatively nice buildings that are maybe two stories tall. There's a couple that might be more than two stories. There's no uh, wall around Swampside. And it has like a... has like a, a country... like a sprawling country vibe to it. And that's, you know, it's a town way over here. Yeah. Um, and you know that you're headed for this shop. The only magic supply store in the kingdom called Mystique's Mystique's um, because the, the owner is Aurelia Mystique and so she yes. called her shop Mystique's Mystique's mm -hmm. um, much to probably the eye rolling of everyone who has to l refer to it uh, but yeah that's the plan as you're getting into Swampside it is uh, it's actually pretty close to noon so Good you've only been on the road on. for a few hours. You can ask for directions to the Emporium, to the, to the Mystiquery, yeah, and yeah. Uh, show well, up there I, or whatever you want. I, as we're getting into the town, or as, you know, as we're just walking in, I'll say, um, so I welcome your thoughts here, guys, but suggest that maybe I'm the best one to go and have this conversation with the wizard. Or do you think I we should all go together? Magical Bullywood should be there. And my friend. Um, what do you think, uh, Gra? I think before we went into town, I probably... I guess I went into no mode. That would be the most acceptable. Um, no mode? Yeah, forest no mode. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. Well, so... Uh, uh, yes, I, I I can come along with you guys. That's, that's, I don't want to stay out alone. Yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, let me do the talking. I'll say that you're, uh, you know, my gods or something. You just say we're your friends. Don't be a fucking liar. <laughs> okay, sure. You're my friends. I'm friends with, uh, well. Never you mind. are. Are you not our friends? <laughs> we, we don't know each other that well. Just yet. Friends oh. share food and company. We've been traveling around <laughs> for a right. few weeks. You told us your whole story. Yes. Rao was here giving you meat pies. I'd say we're friends at this point. Well, we shared food and we shared company, so we are friends, right? Uh, Arrakis thinks how far we have fallen. And then he says, Yes, I suppose. I suppose we are. Very well, then. And I had to mystique's mystique with my friends in tow. Excellent. You head down the dirt road. You're going towards the center of town where Mystique's Mystique's are. Um, when the streets begin to turn into cobblestones and in the, you know, the very center and the big market area of town. Um, but as you, you get closer, you can see that there's a, a bit of a crowd gathered here. Um, you're going to have to start to like, you know, maybe push your way through it or, or kind of squeeze past every now and then. 
Um, and you come to see the building that was Mystique's Mystique's is completely burned to the ground and not more than a charred pile of rubble and heap. Um, so I elbow somebody next to me in the crowd and I say, uh, hey, I'm looking for that Mystique's Mystique. You know, it's around here. They, right? they point directly to the burned pile and goes, well, you come at the wrong time. When did oh, this no. happen? Oh, um, yesterday. Went up He's... in flames. How's Mystique? Missing. Couldn't find any bodies in the, the wreckage. Oh, well, well, that is curious. Yeah, damn fireflies, huh? You think that's what it was? Well, I mean... Like, like the bugs? Who else would do it? I mean, she's a wizard, you know, what they like, messing around with fire and such. They look at you in your red robes. Uh, yeah. I don't practice evocation. Far too dangerous. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for the information. Yeah. What, Good I'm luck, like, Wait, sir. I'm reading their face. What's happening here? I, I don't know. You're a place burned down that you're visiting, and you're like, oh, yeah, them wizards. All sorts of fire happens, and they look at you, and you're like, yeah. also a wizard. And they're kind of like, it's just, who knows what they're thinking, but there's definitely a sense of, like, this is maybe a, uh, you know, they're definitely judging or con contemplating connections yeah. of some kind. Is I... I look around to the walls of the town. I don't see any wanted posters with my face on them, do I? Nope. Right. As the guy, like, as Arrakis moves to, like, continue forward, I'll pull out a gold. I'll hand it to the guy and say, thank you for the information. Nice. Yeah. No problem. Um, do I, I see any gods? <laughs> he doesn't seem to... Actually, he does not seem to mind the Bullywog. Interesting. Um, there are definitely people in this area who are sketched out by Bullywogs, more so yeah. when you're like traveling through the swamp. And also there's some people who don't really mind. Like one of the nice things about this army of Verasi and their like bloodthirsty murderousness is that they employ pretty much anybody. Monsters, and yeah. so people get really used to seeing orcs and half orcs and Bullywogs and centaurs and all sorts of monsters like moving through society. Ooh. Progressive here. Do we, um see any guards around the burnt building? You do see some guards sort of poking around the burnt building, and you see some guards kind of keeping the crowd back and everything. And as you're looking at these guards, Growl, you recognize one of them. No way. Now, it's not often, I think, that Growl remembers a, a person's face, right? Uh -huh. You kind yeah. of strike me as someone who might meet the same pie dealer four times and not really remember much oh, yeah. about them. Yeah. But this person like rings a crystal clear bell. You don't know what the bell is, but like you see the face, you know the face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a person named Forrest, a half elf named Forrest. And you know, they've got like actually um, some like fire burn scars on the right side of their face. Like, you know, the skin is all like warped and twisted. Um, and but you you recognize this person, and I remember their name this. and everything. Yeah, it's very uncharacteristic for such a, yeah. a clear memory to shoot right through to you. Um, and so what do I do? I do I kind of know where I recognize them from? From what kind of time or from what kind of place? Do I have any more associations? Oh. Give me an intelligence check, Growl. Absolutely. I cannot find, for the life of me, the right audio track for this situation. Okay. Big intelligence check. Big intelligence check. Oh, wow. You actually... I never actually expected you to pass that. <laughs> um, maybe this is the right soundtrack? Yeah, you recognize this, this forest guy. Um from your past from like a long time ago uh you think that you were friends like you were you and Forrest used to be like like pretty good friends 
And you just um, sort of happen to forget about them, maybe, or that's weird. Uh, in that or maybe case, not forget about them, but you know, out of sight, out of mind, sort of thing. And you're like, hey, wait a minute, there's my, I for, oh, how did I not remember? Yeah, in, in that case, uh, I will immediately call him out. Hey, Forrest, Forrest, hello, hello. Uh, Forrest will sort of look over in your direction, um, and take a few steps and goes, "Who the hell do you think you're talking to, gnome?" Uh, Forrest, it's it's me. Uh, it's um, uh, it's Grau. Remember from from far away? Hello. Listen here, buddy. I don't know you, and my name ain't Forrest. Uh, no, no, you 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 know me, and you. I I remember you. It's your your Forrest. Right? Remember we used to, um. Uh. <laughs> He squats down to, you know, meet you eye to eye. I kind of start stepping up just in case he's going to, like, fucking punt the gnome. Um, he doesn't seem like he's going to punt the gnome. This town guard is, uh... Well, he is armed in chainmail with a longsword. I step up. Not like I'm going to fight him. Like, mm-hmm. I get close in case anything fucking goes down. Yeah, he looks like up at the approaching frog away. man, looks down at the gnome, and goes, <clears throat> You must be mistaken. My name is Brutus, not Forrest, he says through like gritted teeth. Oh, uh, I guess I, I, I didn't remember your name right, sorry. Uh, uh, Brutus, we, we used to be friends, remember? I don't remember being friends with the gnome. Um, I think I would remember something like that. Sometimes I'm not a gnome. Uh, one of the other guards walks on over and says, uh, Hey, Brutus, we got a problem over here? He's like looking at the bullywug as Brutus Forrest squats down looking at the gnome. Oh, no, there's not a problem. We're friends. He's my friend. I start walking over to the other guard mm. slowly. Yeah, the other guard has, like, banded mail and a shield and, um, I'm sorry, no, has leather armor and a, an arming sword as well. Um, and the, the, you know, the two guards just sort of stand there, one squatting, looking at the gnome, and says through gritted teeth, listen, gnome, friend, maybe we can talk some other time, but I'm busy now, okay? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. Uh, well, maybe hmm, is we can... everything all right here, guys? We can talk later, Brutus. Yeah? Brutus will stand back up. The other guard, we're like, you're friends with the gnome? And Brutus shakes his head and goes, fucking gnomes, man. They do too many drugs. I don't know. He clearly thinks we're best of friends. Never met the guy in my life. I mean, <sighs> Jesus. Fay folk? Fuck me. Who would want to hang out with those losers? Hey, and, uh, don't disrespect my friend. I go over there and I give him a little, give him a little push. Uh, you you I'm, push the town guard. <clears throat> I move away yes, from the Neil. I move away from the from the crowd. Neil, I, I separate away. I want to keep an eye on what's going mm-hmm. on, but I get away, I get away from the throngs. Yeah, yeah. You can you can back up. And some people have been little, watching. I this. give him a little pop. You know, not like a boom, but like a. I was going to let it fly until he started talking shit. Oh, he was talking shit. The town guard looks down over at the, the gnome and, and the frog man. He looks to the other town guard and says, Did you just push me frog legs? Oh, no. Did you just assault no. the town guard of Swampside? Give you a strength check. Uh, yeah, let me see your strength check. It's a good un. Uh, uh, yeah, he goes stumbling backwards. Um, and with that, you can hear the sound of leather and steel scraping against one another as the two guards draw their swords. And we go to our first break. Uh. <laughs> 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcasts. So here we are in the market square. Arrakis has slipped back yeah. in the crowd a little bit. Just at, whilst this is happening, can I just tell you what my intention is? Yes, please. I would like to do something while the crowd is clearly distracted by the... Um, You're welcome, Nick. By the sort of, like, commotion that's happening. Mm-hmm. And for, big... for context, there, there's more crowd than this. I just didn't want to take an yeah, hour yeah. to fill the map with people's. So what I would like to do is find somewhere I can cast a spell without drawing attention to myself. And the spell I would like to cast is Detect Magic. And I would like to scan the, uh, the remnants of the burned down building. All right. Well, that's, uh, since the burned out building is this one over here with all the lines through it, mm -hmm. that sounds like you might want to be heading into this back alleyway. Um, yeah. And maybe ducking behind this building over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like over here. I'll come and cast a spell in this alleyway, and then I'm going to come yeah. up here and take a look. All right. Just a heads uh, up. Mean they shouldn't have their. They should have to draw their weapons, which I know is a free action. But we should roll initiative to see the order of what's happening, because I shouldn't get an opportunity attack against me if I'm fleeing if they don't have their weapons out. Well, you shoved them. You made a successful strength check. Yeah, and they drew the weapons prone. in response. Yeah. Okay. Is can one be prone then, and the other one drew the yes, weapon? Yes. Because that's absolutely. when I would do my memory. Um, for reference, the one on the right is Forest slash Brutus, and the one on the left is Miscellaneous Guard member. Was uh, Forest Brutus. not Brutus the one shit talking? I could. Yeah, sworn Brutus was, was the one with shit talking, but he was the one face to face with the gnome. And while the other guy came up to you, I guess you could shove across the area. That's fine. I shoved whoever called yeah. me frog legs. I'm pretty sure it was the Brutus. Guy. Yeah, it was Brutus. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. That's who I shoved. Perfect. Um, so you yeah. shove him while the, and the other guard will, you know, cause you, a shove takes a little bit of effort. You push, you follow through, you restabilize yourself. And it's as that, you know, restabilizing everything happens that the, the guy draws his arming sword. Um, I guess we could roll initiative, but I didn't get the impression that you were shoving and then immediately running away. Like no, the way that like, you you were talking yeah. made it sound like you're you're what's upping him, uh, and I not like him, immediately he went dipping. Down, he went mm -hmm. down, and then the guy pulls his sword and yeah. knows when I'm gonna run away, right? So I think it's like fine to roll initiative here, unless maybe you yeah. Get but this guy's gonna have a first. weapon out anyway. That's that's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. You you were clearly rolling initiative for something. Yep. Uh, he, this person will roll initiative uh, with an arming sword. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna roll initiative for anything. Uh, growl. growl. Um, no, I'm just I'm just gonna uh, try to defuse the situation. Um, you know. All right. Uh, well, Garp, you're first. I go for. Uh, how tall are these fucking buildings? They are two story buildings. Um, so they are like their roof peaks are like 20 feet up. Okay, is there anything 10 feet up? Like this? Mm, <laughs> one guy's token looks so much like a cop. It's so funny. There is yeah. a banister on the outside here. Is this 10 feet up, would you say? Yeah, that that's a 10 foot. The banister is a little bit more than 10 feet, but the, the edge of the floor is 10 feet. Are you talking about this guy being a cop? The town guard? Has he got a cigarette or a pen? Oh, or he does look like a cop. He's yeah. got a cigarette, yeah. Okay, I run over here. I take an attack of opportunity, I assume. Yeah. Town guard. Oh, uh, yeah, so you, you shove the town guard. Then you then the, the, the bullywug from the swamp tries to bolt and the other guy with the weapon in hand will take a, a slash in your direction which, which is a wild miss you know not catching up with your I swift dodge. and I strong go. and handsome legs the legs my, of achilles this man has my black cape flowing in the wind i jump 10 feet up and i jump to here mm -hmm. it's, i have a 10 foot straight up vertical jump with Excellent. my leap You'll powers. always remember this is the day you almost <laughs> caught Garb. <laughs> Do you want a strength check or a dex check to like grab on and like pull myself up? 
Or is you're, this okay? you're just jumping up onto a thing. I think it's just fine. You don't have a weapon in hand. A banister is a really easy thing to grab onto. Maybe if you're like jumping onto a, a cliff face or something, we'd call for a check or like a window frame with glass in it. But this is like the easiest thing you could possibly grab onto. I look over the railing. I give him the finger. I say, fuck you. And then I wait for my next turn. Uh, the town guard will reach into his shirt and uh, with his offhand, He's gonna and pull out whistle. a whistle <laughs> and uh, give it like a little triple toot. <laughs> doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot, doot. Hey, uh, Brutus, come on. It's we here. Uh, so oh no, I, I, I didn't. I we 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 don't we don't make any trouble, okay? We. It's it's okay, right? Brutus, Brutus gets to his feet. This man just assaulted an officer of the law. Yeah, it's, you know how that goes around here, don't you, Forest he, Gnome? Uh, I mean, he uh, he. This is it's too complicated. He's gonna turn on and run. <laughs> They, uh, they're okay. They don't mind the, the forest gnome running. People will make way. And uh, I think the town guard and the town guard's just, you know, observing the situation and tooting his, his uh, whistle. Brutus is going to start to schlieffen around and uh, push his way between these people and head out through the south side. Uh, same direction as the gnome, but, you know, even the scouting area. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, yes, Arrakis has cast a detect magic spell. Um, and in order to scan a 60 degree arc, you need to stop and concentrate for a minute in order to scan like a 60 degree area. But you can easily scan this this whole zone um, mm -hmm. in that amount of time. And you're, you've got detect magic cast. Yeah, I'm just thinking like if the person, you know, if it did burn down unexpectedly, there's a chance that there might be, you know, some small magic items or something that got left behind. That's a great, that's Oceans, a great idea. Or something <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, out of character, I obviously know that I'm not going to get anything here. But in no, you're going to get a fireball spell. True. But I can't He's going to give you a plus one magic sword. <laughs> he is going to do that one day in just a really stupid fucking way. You know, there's this one adventure module that I read once upon a time and in it it's describing like this dungeon and this lair and the, like, they describe like this section over here is the toilets and if any of the party members actually repels down into the latrine and searches it there is a I can't remember what the magic item was it was like a potion or a <laughs> ring or something that someone had dropped down into the latrine and it was you know mentioned something hidden random. Yeah, nice. just some if you want to search the toilets, you fucking get a reward. Magic potion <laughs> in the toilet. Uh, that's not the situation here. Um, there is... I need to check the residue. Oh. Ah, the remains of a spell, perhaps. <laughs> Your wizard's such a beta. I don't mess around with evocation magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. I'm be saying that when I can summon shadow monsters. <laughs> and people it's two shadows. years from now. Yeah, <laughs> I <true>. told you. <laughs> no. No, there's no uh, magical residue. There's no magical items. Um, you're scanning that section. It appears just to be, you know, sure. burned. Okay. If, if there's any magical items, it's probably like buried in an underground basement or something, and that amount of stone and dirt would block your spell. So is there it, still people should... around the burned down house, or is it kind of cleared out with what's going on? Uh, most people are coming over looking at this incident, and there were already some guards that were keeping people away from the building while someone else was doing like inspecting of the remains. But now that the fight has started, everyone is sort of standing and like looking over there in that like I was working on a project, but then I heard a noise, and now I'm just like. You know, I've stopped my project and I'm staring so curiously off into the there's distance. There's still people standing around yeah. in the wreckage. Yeah, um, yeah. Looks like an investigator of some kind. Remind me, is there a visual effect from casting the tech magic? Um, 
I, like I don't. Well, I think it's once it's cast, there's no further effect. You're using the the original detect magic. Yeah. Um, um, then I'll I'll go over there and try and start a conversation with one of those guards. But that might be next round. Uh, yeah, that's probably next round. In the meantime, Garp, what are you gonna do? Is it the next round? That's the next round, yeah. What are your actions here? That kid's still just there with his fucking whistle? Well, he spent his round, you know, whistling and calling the, the town guard with his with his whistle. I'm gonna do... A, a Bobby's greatest weapon. Wait, shouldn't we... We should re-roll for initiative, though. Because it, yeah, it we does should. matter. Yeah. Good. That's big for me. <laughs> Uh, ooh, wow. Okay. First one to act is actually Brutus. Brutus. Uh, and what Brutus does as he moves down over here is he is going to come up and he's going to one arm the gnome and like try and scoop the gnome and dart off into an alleyway with the gnome. Uh, I'm so good. Oh, no. Um, gnome. Does he not need to roll a you, check? This is just a little gnome. How, how much fucking, can a gnome weigh? He's got to roll to hit. Remember He's this. coming gnome. up behind the gnome. I mean, I there should maybe. definitely be a check. Yeah. Maybe maybe the gnome is paying attention. Maybe maybe Forrest needs to make a The question a basic is, does the, gnome, does the gnome resist? Um, well... Oh, my friend. Uh... I'm just I'm, try, I'm trying to get out of here, okay? I'm to, but like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like I'm, I I didn't do anything wrong, so I'm, I'm not gonna resist. I'm just gonna yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he grabs you. He scoops you up in one arm with a twenty-one to hit. Not a problem. Comes up from behind, puts you underneath his armpit. Goes around the corner of the building, in between the building and this little shed. Maybe actually just like out behind the shed. Um, plops you down, stares you in the face, and goes, what the hell do you think you're doing trying to blow my cover? The fuck is going on? What, what, what are you, what is, what, who the what fuck is, are you? What is, I'm, I'm, I'm Grau, I'm from far away. <laughs> I just remember, you, you're my friend Forrest. You were, I, 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 I don't have I, time to untangle this fucking mess. Why don't you meet me on the north si- uh, south side of town an hour after sundown, okay? The south side of town an hour after so south side of town. Oh my okay, god. I can, yes, no, I can, I, yes, I can do By that. the gods! Yes, yes. And then he does a head shake and uh, runs towards the stairs. And uh, that'll be the end of his round. Next up, Garp and Town Guard go at the same time. Um, I'm just doing movement, so this should be fine. I shouldn't have yeah, had got, You can tell me if this is extra multiplier on. But he would take out his pole arm and he twirls it around a little bit and he says mm-hmm. you don't want any of this young man <laughs> and then he, <laughs> he jumps again he jumps up 10 feet Rubber. to the next one boom Rubber. and he stays up there and he does cool fucking tricks and moves for the whole town 10 on his charisma check excellent um the town guard is gonna go inside a building run up the stairs and at the end, by the end of the round, we make it out to the balcony. Um, that's probably, I don't know, 120 feet of movement plus some climbing of stairs. That sounds about right. Um, and so he'll get to this same area uh, while a couple of the other guards that were, you know, taking a look at the burned out scene um, that were over here, keeping an eye on stuff. They will look be... up. They see they look up. Garp up there doing, I don't know, fucking Taekwondo. With his superhuman <laughs> feats. He's just doo, 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 doo. <clears throat> He gets mm-hmm. on one leg and he goes like he does like the praying mantis and does a kick. Boom. <laughs> right. Well movement. Two guards. Uh, one will stay by the, the burned building. The other two will sort of come on in and take a look at the place. One dashing all the way to the back side, one other one coming up to the front side. And this first one that got to the this place right here goes. I don't know what you think your problem is there, sir. But you're slow, Mr. Bullywug. And humans are a hell of a lot faster. So why don't you come on down now before things get messy? Uh, I'd be slow if it wasn't for my magic item. And then I roll into initiative and I get a four. 
<laughs> Jesus. Uh, and four goes first. How many? How, what, my move speed is six. So how yeah, many feet? It's like I half move? the speed. That's sixty feet. As I'm up here, because he's not up uh -huh. here for no reason, and he's not doing uh -huh. it for no reason. While he's doing it, he's looking. Is there a pond? Is there any water nearby? We're in a fucking um, swamp. Which way do I got to go for water? Sw the swamp <laughs> is looking, looking. Uh, the swamp is sort of north and east, but we're in the middle Beautiful. of town, and That's so fine. it's quite a ways away. Yeah. Garp runs to here. He does his 30-foot leap, easily clearing it, <sighs> and he gets to about here. Excellent. <laughs> And uh, he's going to be using, like, the tops of the buildings because they mm -hmm. do have elevation and stuff to try and, like, hide where he goes next. So if he goes over here, he's assuming, like, the people down here can't, like, see if he jumped this way or if he jumped this mm -hmm. way. You know, I'm going to try and use that. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> the next town guard goes, and they're originally, they're over here on the, the left mm -hmm. side. They were originally just, like, guarding in case you came down, but now that you're heading that way, they're going to spend their 120 feet of movement um, sort of just coming over, keeping an eye on the back side of the building. The next guard is the one who was chasing you and is going to make a... Um, he's going to try and climb on this rooftop, and I think <laughs> he's got a, a default 40% chance... And he's gonna get a bonus because but he's got like, he trying to do it railing. fast. He's just he's just trying to climb up. So one D one hundred. I'm gonna say he's got like a sixty five percent chance to make it to the rooftop. You want higher low? Uh, he wants low, and he'll get to the rooftop, and uh, oh, then he'll have to back up to the side. Now he's a human, so he's got a lot more movement than <laughs> you. But so he'll smart. climb up. He runs back, and he's gonna try and clear this ten foot gap. Ten feet. Um, that's a long. Feet. It's two squares. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a 10 foot gap from center to center is 15 feet. But yeah. Uh, now, jumping. Jumping's uh, one of those things that second edition never really decided to figure does out. Does he have the jumping proficiency? He does not. He's fucked. He's fucked, is, is the answer. He doesn't but have the swimming proficiency. He definitely doesn't have a swimming proficiency. And he's fucked. Yeah, these guys are. Uh, are let's see. If he did have a jumping proficiency. And he had his at least a 20-foot start, which I think this rooftop qualifies. Yep. It allows him. Yep. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Then he can broad jump 2d6 plus his level and feet without a proficiency check. Um, 2d6 plus his level. Yes, yeah, so that oh, would be fucked. 7 and 1 or 2. It would be like, you know, 8 feet, maybe 9 feet. So for all. Um, but he doesn't have a jumping proficiency. So I'm going to make him make a non-proficient jumping proficiency check, uh, which comes off of strength. So he's going to roll a d20 <laughs> plus half his strength. Sorry, Peach. Uh, is a brave attempt to roll. Is that right? Yeah. 1d20 plus six. Here we go. Oh, Fucking natural, natural 20. 20. That's huge. Okay. Oh make God. the roll. All right. 2d6 <laughs> plus... Uh, two for the distance he can jump. He needs a ten or higher. Oh, he almost gets it. Wait, but it's a cling, beautiful jump. Can he cling onto the edge of the roof? I think with a natural twenty and yeah. just barely missing it. You I think give what him a happens check. is like his foot, his one foot um, is at the very edge of the rooftop, and the other foot, like the toes, touch the roof but don't quite make it, and then he slips, and he's gonna get a saving throw versus death magic to uh, or paralyzation poison death magic all the same, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a failure, and he will tumble the twenty feet to the ground and I'll take two d six. Oh wait, ahead, Nick. yeah, Nick, roll it. Go ahead. Six. That is exactly his hit is he points. He knocked out. <laughs> oh, he'll fall to the ground. Out unconscious but not dead i nice. defeated him <laughs> huge <laughs> XP. Okay. um this other guard will shout make combat. way and uh come on over here and brutus will be doing the same thing i think at the end of the round he'll get to this section of because he's got to go up the stairs and everything and probably to here and i think brutus can one whoops 
R R one D one hundred sixty five or lower. He can get to the roof, and that'll he'll end his turn on the roof. He'll end his turn there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Reroll. this is where we're gonna be. All right, Garp. Are you gonna continue your escapades? <laughs> yeah, I rolled movement. All right. <laughs> initiative. Initiative. The thing is, is, they don't have a good chance to jump across the fucking buildings. I'm 100%. No. I'm pretty sure I could just jump across each of these buildings in perpetuity mm -hmm. and fuck them over. Yeah, but those whistles, eventually other people are going to show up. Well, that's why I'm running away. Mm. I just need to hit a big I need to hit a big one. Well, Brutus is going to stand here. He's going to see you way across there. And he's going to call out to you. Um, listen here, Mr. Escargo. You come down from that roof, I can guarantee you a comfortable couple of nights in a stockade. <laughs> Neil, what do you think Escargo is? <laughs> oh, it's it's uh, fried snails. I, okay, I'm yeah. aware. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, <laughs> sure. He's he's just, yeah. He, uh, the character just doesn't know. Yeah. He's role playing. No, the yeah. character knows. Yeah, yeah, he's just yeah, yeah, yeah. he's being insulting. You know, it's, I see. it's French food. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I can guarantee you a couple of comfy, cozy nights in the stockades. But if you make me work for it, I'll see you over a spit. And that's the end of his turn. Um, the town guard back here has a sword drawn. Keep some distance. Other town guard comes on over here. Actually, he's going to run over and check on his buddy um, because, you know, the other guy just fell and, and hurt himself very badly. Uh, but he'll stand up and be like, it's okay. And uh, Garp, end of the round. Boom. Big daddy's coming. I'm here. Okay. You mm -hmm. did some bullshit with the testing earlier. I'm jumping 30 feet to there. To in. Oh, hang on. You can't be doing that. It's from this rooftop a, this to is rooftop. A 30... Yeah, that's yeah, I 30... know. But earlier here, no, no, no you yeah, said... I know what you're saying. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can be doing that, Nick. Thank you. Right. Last campaign, I was specifically called out for doing such things. But... That's because but you were moving because... from center to center, yeah, and we're, we're now trying top. to measure we're on top the of roofs. the the gap rather than the yeah. yeah. We're in another level than so what it's you a were slightly doing, okay? different mechanic we're talking about here, Nicholas. Yeah. Okay, sure. Technically Boom. speaking. Yeah, well, technically um, speaking, though, you don't jump from the tip of the corner of the thing, do you? You jump like... Don't you? Who would jump? Who would, Have you ever who seen a long jump jumper? You always jump at the line. Yeah, but it's a tiny little corner. Why you not? Know, you know, Why not? Okay, I right. just did. Look at him. Garb's yeah. there. <laughs> I suppose it's only 28 feet. Um, right. Question for you, Neil, then. Yeah. Does the jump include my movement? Or is the jump extra? Jump is would, part of your movement, I think. Jump is is how part, it, okay, then my yeah. movement is done there, definitely. Yep, that's where you end. All right. Well. Oh, wait, did I yell something back at the guy? Uh, No, you said I'm going to make a big I daddy move. I flip him off and I say, eat shit and die, pig. And then <laughs> I run over and jump. <laughs> Why? Oh, my All right. God. Well, Garp, I think we're going to move into um, mm. a bigger chase mechanic here because you're going to run out of rooftops real fast unless you're going to just stay in this area forever. Keep him, hold on. I think we should do one more round. Mm, I don't know. If I feel like I have a chance of hiding somewhere, I do have a 75% chance to hide in natural settings with no one yeah. having Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to get us to yeah. is we're going to do a more of a chase scene, mm. and I want you to tell me... Are you just trying to outrun these people or are you going to try and like blockade their path so you can get a clean getaway or are you going to like, how are you going to deal with being chased? And that will determine the, the set of dice we roll rather than taking it round by round for another My goal hours. is that because I'm on the rooftop and I'm actually not an idiot, um, Tenant, you know, he's not the brightest brain in the world, but he does understand that these guys are having a big difficulty of following him that his entire goal is to try and get to the water or lose them by using the rooftop angles and jumping mm -hmm. from roof to roof. That is his goal. If he mm -hmm. finds a spot where he's like, okay, I don't see him anymore, he's going to jump down into, I don't know, some bushes, something like that, and hide. Well, <laughs> it is fall. It is uh, harvest season. There is going to be plenty 
of foliage and corn stalks and bushes. Like with your hide and natural settings ability and your big leaping skills, you're going to probably be able to get a spot where you can jump into bushes, but then it'll just yeah. be, you know, it'll be your At hide check point, versus their ability to find you. It would probably be one person stumbling upon him anyways, and he's willing to kill that person before they can get their whistle out, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. To try and then go to the next spot, if he's if he's discovered. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, we can roll some dice. Yeah. Um, so... We're going to have you make a hide in shadows check. Um, or it's hide in natural settings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 75 because I think chance, no armor. You've got your, your leaps. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be able to get it to yourself in a position where you can hop off of one roof and then just like plop down on the other side and maybe hide in a bush or something. Duck in. And hopefully the guards who are having to chase you and go around the buildings instead of over them will, will just sort of barely miss you and... We'll just see what happens. So go ahead and make me your hide check. Nick, do I want high or low? Low. Low. Okay. Low. 28. Excellent. So I'm just going to use this section of, like, corn right next to you, um, where you maybe run to the edge, and then it looks like you're going to leap off, but you instead drop like into the corn. I got, to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and our soldiers I'm in the corn, guards. and I get low. Mm-hmm. Our town guards are going to swarm the area looking for for the frogman. The frog Jumping the only frogman in town who wears a black cloak and walks around with a glaive, which is not an easy weapon to hide. You know, it's not like a short sword or a dagger. It's a big ass pole with a big hey. ass blade on top of it. You know, it's been a couple of rounds. My character is around this area. Yeah, oh you were gonna talk to some folks, weren't you? Yeah. Well I wanted to talk yeah. to the one guard that was remaining over here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, um, so yeah, I think you can do. get uh, two rounds of conversation before they have to run off. So what do you want to say? Well, I'm just <laughs> saying, if I see this happening, like I might have actually mm -hmm. seen, because I will have been watching Garth, I might have seen him go and hide in the corn because of the angle I've got here. Um, so I might take an action if I think he's going to get found. Uh, well, what did you want to say to the guards? Yeah, I was just going to ask him, like, what happened here? Like, what are you looking for? Um, uh, there, there was a fire. Build and burn down. It's the magic uh, shop, and the right? yep, yep. Owner lived here too, but body wasn't found. We think it might be the fireflies. Is there another magic shop in town? I was really looking to pick up <laughs> some components. No, you'd be lucky if you could find another magic shop in a hundred miles. Oh, by the gods! So this mystique, she's you saying she's dead or missing? By the looks of it, you find a spell book in there. I mean, it's all ash. H hold on. Fuck, I gotta go after this frog. Uh, and the guard will leave you in the middle of the conversation at that point. Okay. So now there is no one around the wreckage. Yeah. Would a, uh, a spell book wouldn't burn in a fire, or do I think it probably would in, in like a building fire? It probably would. So yeah. spell books are, uh, the paper is often made out of vellum, and vellum doesn't combust the same way like paper or papyrus does. It will like singe because it's a stretched animal hide and it will shrivel and it will curl, but it won't like combust and burn the rest of it down. But if you like toss a piece of vellum into like a barbecue pit, um, it know. will all slowly curl and burn. Yeah. Get in there, Nick. I created the perfect distraction yeah. like we planned. Yeah, just like we planned. Um, seeing the guard run off, Neil, mm -hmm. uh, I will keep an eye on the situation here. All right. So, to well, answer the question, do I know where Garp is or not? Oof. You can roll a check to maybe um, have known. Give me a perception check to see if you had... Because the guard that was over here that you were talking to, like, moved before Garp made his final yeah. drop down. And so we'll give you a perception check to see if you repositioned over here in anticipation of Garp's movement, or if you were coming over here to like get a different angle on the building, because you know there's still a crowd in this area and they're they're watching wherever Garp is going. So I rolled a yeah. 17 yeah. plus 12 for a 29. Yeah, so I think you came out next to this outhouse mm -hmm. um, and were using it as cover while inspecting the building and you can see Garp sort of drop down from this building but then you lose him in the cornfield maybe he goes out that side maybe he goes out that side maybe he comes out over here um, last you saw he dropped into the corn stalks 
yeah. as the soldiers, town guards move on. But you'll notice that one, you know, they all start to move on, but they're not just going to run forever. They don't see him. Some of them are, are spreading out. Whistles are blowing. One of them is going to kind of stand around here. Someone needs to be able to direct like the, the people who are arriving to what's going on. Yeah. And so this guard just chills in this area. And Garp from the corn stalks, you can see him. Um, and we're going to pause on all of that for a moment. And we're going to head back down to the <laughs> other side of the map. And we're going to take a look at Growl. Now, Growl, it's been a weird day. Yeah. You remembered a person who was very angry at you and pretended they didn't know you. And then they picked you up and said that they might know you, but they don't remember you and that you're getting them in trouble by talking to them and that they should meet you in a place and a time that's not now or here. How? What? What? What is happening, Garp? Uh, what is this situation? Yeah, Grau has no fucking idea. This is to him. This, this is just more human shenanigans. It's just, mm. you know. Oh, yeah, it's he'll he'll interact with humans all the time and they'll be like, uh uh you you're you're a funny person, aren't you? And then Grau's going to be like, "Oh, really? Wow, and you think I'm funny?" And they're like, "That's not what we meant at all." And then Grau's really confused. And this is just another one of those situations, but I guess the, the way that it's different is that um is that Grau is that has this weird memory of this person. This has never happened to him before. It's Quite strange for him. Um, what is your memory? Well, it seems that the only thing he really does remember is that, like, he used to be friendly with this person and he remembers his name. But it seems like there's nothing else that's happening. It, like, there's no, like, real connection there of what, what could be going on. Um, so it's it's all very strange and confusing. And... To, to growl, it's like, oh wow, it's like a friendly face. It's like a person that I trust. It's very, like, instinctual. Based off of just like, oh, I know this person. This person was nice to me. Time to approach them. And uh, the, the mm -hmm. greater implications of the fact that he doesn't really remember any of the greater context are kind of lost on growl in this moment. Because in when he was bare, uh, when he was just bare, this is just how all of hi him knowing anything works, right? Mm-hmm. So... Now that you're in this kind of confused state, and your friends are gone, like they're both, you don't know where Arrakis is, you don't know where Garp is, Renata's fur is sick with the plague, um, and you're supposed it's to meet someone in an, you know, after an hour after sundown on the south side of town. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do, Grau? I think is gonna try to find his friends again. He's probably gonna assume that, um, that Garp is gone, or at least not going to be where he, where he left him. But I think he'll at least attempt to find Arrakis. Um, maybe in the town square, maybe like look around, maybe even ask someone if they've seen him. Um, just try to find his friend again, because he's confused about the situation. He'd like some input from someone. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if you're going to look for your friends, which I think is what you were getting at, yeah. um, you will be able to find Arrakis without too much trouble. Yeah. Um, I think Arrakis, you've had a moment before Growl will get to you because he's a little bit slow with those short legs and he's kind of wandering and he's a little confused. Yeah. What are you going to be doing um, before he arrives in your mm -hmm. direction? I don't think I'm doing anything. I think I'm just watching the situation and yeah. if it looked like Garp was going to get found, I was going to do something. No, I think the two of you then will come and meet um, and you'll see this one guard standing near the cornfield and kind of looking around and giving a toot on his whistle every now and then, um, just waiting for, you know, yeah. someone. So, so I probably feel like uh, Growl pulling on my robes or something like that from behind me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Growl. Hello. Good, you didn't, you didn't get captured. Hello. You didn't get captured. Uh, Garp's on the run. Everything all right? Um, I'm. Well, it's 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 weird because uh, this uh, forest, my friend, you know. Your friend, the the guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, he followed me. 
Um, uh -huh. And then he was like, oh, uh, you know, he's he said something about a cover, a cover being blown. I don't know huh. what that means. Um, wow. I don't know who your friend is, but uh, sounds like he's I don't trying really, to hide who he is. I don't you know, really like, know uh, either. He said to meet him uh, out, outside of town after sundown. Did he know who you were? I, I don't think so. I think he didn't remember. Maybe it's because I'm gnome? Yeah, maybe. Was he like, what was he like when you knew him? Oh, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't actually know. I don't remember at all. Uh, I just, he's, he's a friend, I think. Um, That's weird. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's weird. Well, we can go together. Uh, you would come with, him. you would come with, it's so confusing, humans are so confusing, it's so weird, I don't even, is he, is he gonna do something bad, you think? I have no idea, I mean, it kind of sounds like he's pretending to be a god, god knows why. Uh, why would, oh, like, like when I pretend to be a human? Yeah, you yeah, think he, sort of, you he think probably maybe wants he... something from the gods. You think maybe he's a bear too? No. Or maybe some other kind of animal? Maybe yeah. like a bird or a salmon? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he's like an. Oh, I could go for some salmon soldier. right now. Like oh, a revolutionist? I haven't had some fish in a while. I'm really hungry, actually. Yeah. Yeah, well, well you know, I'll keep an eye on Garp if you want to go and get some food, but, uh,. Things are still pretty tense here. I say, like, looking away from Growl back over to the corner to check that Garb's okay. Uh, that, <clears throat> the guard is just hanging out here, making this, it uh, difficult for Garp to leave. I point over here. There's like a pumpkin over there. You could eat that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't... I kind of feel like fish now, actually. You think he's a fish? He, well... The thing is, even if he is a fish, it's probably best not to eat him. Yeah, I wouldn't want that, yeah. Mm. Well, um, but, I, we, you, but you think we should go meet him, yes? He's not gonna... Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, there's a, I, I think there's a stall over there selling some fish. You could use some of those coins that Autumn gave you to buy some. Oh, right! The money is a bison! Yes, yes, yes! He's gonna immediately go off and try to find the stall that sells fish. Yeah, you can find some fish for sale. Uh, it's pretty midday here. Eventually, some other guards will show up. And Garp, what is your plan here? While, you know, you're in the corn and they can't well, I was gonna see say, you. Like, and you're like, you're pulling a Batman in the alleyway where you kind of have to like wait for everyone to leave. And we never see the awkward parts of Batman where he's just like crouched between two buildings waiting for people yes. to go away. <laughs> so here's... Here's that moment, I guess. Like, if this guy is just directing people, like, he went that way, he went that way, he went that way, like, multiple times, and it's just him, um, I'm going to move over to here in the cornfield, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, like, peek my head out. Do I see any fucking guards in this? I, well, I, I, try to ca town. I try to catch his eye. I try to catch his eye when he comes to the edge of the cornfield. Well, yeah, I do, know, I is, do. This is going to be a, a thriving town, and there's going to be people around, right? So, like, out here, you might see someone, like, working in this field or someone might have come out to be to be picking these pumpkins or checking on it maybe they're wiping off mildew or maybe there's like a cart and, and with a horse coming down the road like there's I do stuff a peek. going on do i see mm -hmm. do i catch arrakis's eye you want a perception or something um arrakis isn't going to see you because you are hiding in uh, do, I, do i see him his head's all right you will I, see I arrakis that, yeah. but arrakis will not see you is how that's gonna go because if Arrakis can see you, anyone else that's around can see you. Well, only because I'm looking closely for him. Maybe. Hmm. But he's got a 75% chance to blend into natural surroundings, and I think he did very well on that chance. Um, I'm trying to think if it matters if Arrakis sees me or not. Okay, so I look, at, I look out here. Are there any mm -hmm. guards in this vicinity? No, this guy's over here, and he's talking um, on the north side of you with a few other 
soldiers, uh, a few other town guards, saying, I don't know where he went, we might have lost him, but how many bullywugs wielding glaives with black cloaks can we hope to come across? Oh, that guy, I mean, did you see the way he was spinning that thing? It's not like he's just going to discard his weapon. Well. I'm going to try and, like... I have <laughs> something in my bag. Can you tell me if the sun is, like, shining over here onto me anywhere? Like, you know when you, like, um... It's maybe I wanna... one o'clock, so the sun glint. is just barely off of the due north. I'm sorry, I glint due south. with my item and try to get, um... Nice. Uh, Arrakis's eye. Yes. It's gonna be with can... my thing in my bag that you can check. In my small pack, I'm gonna pull it out, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna open it, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. use it to like try and catch the sun. Try and to like catch the sun. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I think with Growl and Arrakis there, you can sort of try and get their eye, and after a minute or two, um, certainly it'll shine in their eyes, and they'll see where it's coming from. And I'll stick a one finger out, mm -hmm. and then I'll pull it back in. When I see like him like checking it out. Mm -hmm. I'll stick like a frog finger out and then I'll pull Fucking it back genius. in. Genius. Genius. Okay. <clears throat> a frog finger goes out. I don't know how yeah. to interpret this, but I watch eagerly. All right. Um oh. Yeah, I think that's it. I think he waits for them to do something, and if nothing happens, then he's just gonna wait. They know yep. where he is. He's gonna stay there. Uh until the coast is hundred percent clear and they come and get him. Boom. Yep. Yeah. Well, the coast will clear somewhat because these people are still sort of investigating this this fire situation. So eventually they'll stop looking for you, but then they'll come back down and be like in the area where the fire and the burned down building is. Um, so they're still cool, around, this. but they're... A lot of frogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I'm waiting around then, Neil, I start to, you know, lose a bit of patience. Just I'm not just going to stand here all day. This building mm -hmm. that the magic shop is connected to, what is that? Mm -hmm. uh, this is... Uh, it's a little market. You know, it's got some different wares and some housing upstairs. Uh, the wares that it houses are... Uh, it, it, it's a pottery barn. I would like to peruse the pottery barn once the guards... Oh. Uh, you know, meander off slightly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, there's some good vases for sale. Yeah. I am looking for two things, right? I'm going to check this wall here between the two areas to see if there's, like, serious fire damage on the oh, side of that wall. And I would also... There really is. ...for any yeah. entrance to a basement that might be under this whole building. Yeah, well, in the, the potter's area... Um, you won't see any basements right away. If there's going to be basement access, it might be in one of the like other back rooms, maybe. Mm -hmm. But certainly, this fire over here has spread and caused damage to this building as well. The roof is badly burned and damaged. The ground floor, not so much, because it was like a stone wall between the two of them. Um, someone must have successfully fought the fire or something in order for it to not consume the entire building. There must have been an active effort to... To keep it from okay. spreading too far. Who is who is working in this shop? Um <laughs> The the shopkeeper is way. someone named Haney. Uh is that a human? Uh it is it's not a human name. That is not a human name. It's, it's a halfling. Else. Haney oh. the halfling the uh, the clay tosser. I, I pick up a smallish vase. And I head over to the uh, the counter, and I say, uh, "This is some fine work. Do you make these in house?" Certainly do. Uh huh. You a uh, big commotion going on outside. I don't suppose you know anything about it. Oh yes. Oh, it was quite the thing last night. Building next wow. door caught fire. It was a whole big deal. Guards came and talked to me. It's been a, a busy couple of days. Well, day and a half, I suppose. Anything weird happened the night before? Oh, there was a fire. Yeah, but before that, leading up to it. Oh. Well, the, before that, it was Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. no, kind of a normal day. 
Didn't work Sunday. Never work Sundays. So, uh... Do you, uh... How much is this, by the way, I say, handing the vase over to him? Oh, it's a silver and a half. I give the halfling a gold coin and say, uh, keep the change. No, that's well, you can't. That's way too much money. I, that's criminal. Here. And shuffles around. <laughs> no, it's bag, okay. I we'll was hoping I could ask you some silver. questions maybe about Mystique. Oh, you know, oh. I think she might have saved my shop. Can't also, know why else I wouldn't have burned down. Only a sorceress like Mystique could have prevented fire from spreading to the whole town. You don't think she'd have stopped the fire from burning her own shop down if she had the power? I think she would. Yep. Why? Must have must have shown up after everything caught fire, but before it spread too far. Why would she leave? Well, she doesn't live there. But well, my house is in here, but uh, oh. her her house isn't in the same place that her shop is. Oh, is that right? Where's her house? Um, you know, I've, I've never been to her home myself. Scratches his beard a little bit. Uh, I think it's south a little bit. Okay. Oh, no, really. Why? Did you, uh, do you have business to, with Mystique? Yeah, I was picking up an order. I'm worried that it might have been destroyed in the fire, but perhaps oh, well, Mystique's... Oh, it certainly was. Well, maybe she, maybe she had it stashed somewhere else, or maybe she could still help me. Well, wherever she is, uh, she's not here. No one knows where it is. I'm sure they've already checked her house. But there's say, guards searching it right now. I guess so, yeah. Say, um, there isn't like a basement connecting this building to her shop, is there? He, like, just put eight silver on the table, and he, like, pulls two of them back. Yeah. And, like, drops it in his pouch. Uh, no, there's not. Oh. There is. <laughs> then suppose I could, uh, you know, wizards are, like, sneak secrets and things like that. Could uh -huh. I have a look around? You could, uh, I'm happy to pay, or you can come with me. I'm look around nothing. my shop? The basement. Well, my basement? There's yeah. not down there but clay and, and wheels and water. I just want to take, take a look if there's any, <clears throat> you know, passages or things like that leading to the other house. Uh, the halfling shifts on his feet. Uh, okay. And scoops the rest of the silver coins back into his pocket. Mm -hmm. um, walks to the front door, closes it. Flips the, opens it again, flips the sign on the door that says closed, shuts the door, and uh, will lead you into his basement, um, where he appears to be telling the truth. There's a stairway down, and then it's just a small little basement with a, a, a lantern dangling from the ceiling, which he has to light. You know, it's on a little rope <clears throat> that uh, raises and lowers it. It'll shed light throughout the room, and it'll be a, a little potter's den where you can throw some clay, and there's a kiln in there where you can... Um, fire harden it all. Is the term? Mm -hmm. Bake? Cook? There's um, a term for... There is a term. Is it just called firing? I think yeah, it's called yeah, firing. Yeah, it's called firing. firing yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Can you I, uh, uh, cast I go to knock? The... I'm not no, asking if you can no, do it right now. I'm just two. asking in the in the future, do you have, like, the, is it one of your spell specialties? Do you know what I mean? I think I can't cast it, but I'd need to check. Um... <laughs> I go to the wall adjoining <clears throat> to Mystique's shop, so this wall here, mm -hmm. and I just kind of go yeah. check it. It's a, a stone wall. Um, go ahead and make me a perception check. 30, 18, oh my God. natural 18 plus 12. Oh, there's a, something a there, you Fantastic know. perception check. Um, nice. You'll feel the walls. They seem pretty solid. You're 100% certain there's no secret passageway between this and anything on the other side. In fact, you know, it might just be... The halfling might be telling the truth. It might be solid dirt oh, yeah. on the other side. He, Do it, Nick. Yeah, he probably is. Uh, satisfied. Satisfied. <laughs> no, sat satisfied with my checks. I turn back around to Handy the halfling. And I say, uh, all right, I mean, I guess there's nothing down here, but thanks for your time. 
Oh, of course. Anything to... Um... Of course! Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, and thank you for the vase. I say. And I'll, uh... Make my way out. Uh... If you're just gonna throw the vase away... Can I have it back? <laughs> That's very prescient of you. Uh... I mean, yeah, I, sure. I know you didn't want to buy it for it. And it's, I actually a, like that one. It should go to someone who actually... Who, who actually likes likes it, you know? It's a fine, it's a fine piece of work. How big I, is it? Of course, I mean, you bought it? it. It's yours. I just... It, it's like uh, two pounds. Is it... Would it be too inconvenient to use as something to store spell components? Yeah, there'd be... There's no lid. Yeah. Okay. It'd just fall out. He can probably I, uh, show you something that would I, be convenient. I, I sort of, like, sort of hand it back to him. Slowly. <laughs> and say, okay. All right. Oh, have a Thanks. good day. Uh, what did you. you say your name was, wizard? Sakara. Sakara. Have a good day, Sakara. Nice to meet you. I'm going to uh, lead you out. Open the door. Flip the sign back around to open. And uh, leave the door propped open. And wait for you and the gnome to leave. Yeah, we leave. Is there still guards checking out the rubble? Yeah, there's people like kicking through it and talking about things. Um, there's only three guards left. Others are probably still looking for the frogman or have gone off to do something else. It's really just one person scoping it out and two keeping a perimeter. Am I seeing anyone like, is there a, a hole down into a basement or something that the... Mm -mm, doesn't look like it. Like they haven't, fa that they haven't found it or... They haven't found it or there isn't one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Grau, you want to go get a drink? Um... What time is it? Five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Well. Oh <clears throat> uh, yeah. I. I guess I could. Uh. I could go for some refreshments. Is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the spirit, yeah. my little friend. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh. Let's go and get a drink. Is there. Is there a tavern where we can get a. Keep an eye on Kraho. On Garp. Uh, there is a tavern just across the way. Uh, over here is a, a tavern down on the ground floor. Yeah, all right. I think we, I think we go there. Okay. Well, Garp, they didn't come uh, for you. When it turns like nighttime, I will leave. Yeah, the guards and... will leave before nighttime, um, yeah. and then you can go. But. By now, well, everyone in the city probably knows the story of, of the the bullywug with the glaive who taunted yeah, he the was guards. A hero. He was a hero who fought and stood for something against the guards. <laughs> what did he hurt? Stand no for? one. <laughs> They're not sure, but I'm sure that there was <laughs> but it's something. something. It's he stood on the top. He told yeah. He told the guard he shouldn't die. <laughs> he didn't hurt anyone. He waved his glaive around and looked. You know, he looked a certain way. <laughs> He's, He's not concerned about what the common folk think. Yeah. Um, Epic. More concerned, where is his party gonna be? He thinks. Well, Where's I was the... I was going to say that I will buy a pipe and some tobacco, and every sort of like forty five minutes or so, I'll head outside of the tavern to, you know, smoke a bit of my pipe. Which I'm aware that mm. there is no no smoking inside rules here, probably, but I do it anyway. Yeah, and it's I'll a just civilized go and check on... fucking place. No smoking inside. Oh, okay. And I check on oh, Garp's nice. corn patch, and if I see like, when you, the like, guard... go to the corn patch? If the guard's not there, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I come out and the guard is no longer standing right by it, I will go over to it. Perfect. Uh, do yeah. you bring Growl with you during this time, or do you leave Growl by himself in the tavern? No, I mean, we've got a table. I just go out for five seconds to smoke, and I go and... I'm familiar with in. you stepping out for five seconds to smoke. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. I do that. I remember this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back on the other side with a little more Save or Die Outcasts. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die Outcasts. So it's nighttime in the city of Swampside. <clears throat> Wait, it wasn't like nighttime, right? It's it was evening. evening time. Evening before the sun's down, yeah? Yeah, well, it's it's October, so the sun's beginning to set earlier and earlier. Um, so around you know four thirty-five, okay, begins to go down. And I see a guy smoking a pipe outside of my cornfield. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So if the guard's not there, I head over to the cornfield. Yeah. I don't. I don't like beeline towards it. Near like meander towards it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I get to the edge of the cornfield. I don't turn to face it. I just sort of stand there and I go. Psst. Okay, it's clear. The guard's gone. We're in the top. <laughs> I come out of the fucking cornfield. <laughs> Dust myself off. My stunt you pulled fucking... there. Do you like my uh? My distraction? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. At least you didn't end Thank up you. in prison or dead. But uh, what's the plan now? Because the house is burnt down, the wizard's missing. Apparently that guard that uh, Grau was talking to um, came back afterwards and said that uh, he's undercover and he'll meet them an hour after sundown on the south side of town. I thought we could go and check it out, but... When did you tell him that? I don't Are you know. sure they're just not trying to find me? In the chaos, so this is just what Grau said. You know, you know how it is. I don't know exactly what he, what he meant, but you know, I reckon there's a few hours till sundown. So I don't know what you want to do. I'm not sure you can go into the tavern, but we can meet you on the south side of town an hour after sundown. Put my arm around you. <laughs> Let's go have a pint. <laughs> you really think that's wise? You're not exactly no inconspicuous. What I did, I didn't do anything. All right. You're so confident. I'll put my hood up, cover myself. Yeah, what's that um, in the corner? You no. go in first. All right. I go well, inside. Are people staring you... at me? <clears throat> I'd like a hide check with my big black cloak. Well, you got a big black cloak, but you're also an unusual shape, and you got a glaive. It's true. Um, Are there any off-duty cops in here? <laughs> <laughs> you don't recognize any off-duty cops, but you do definitely get some looks as you come in and, and sit down. Uh, we'll see what me, comes I of it. I give some fucking waves. I give it a few moments, then I follow it afterwards. Okay. How many people are in this bar? Ooh, maybe 20, 25, including staff. How much is a pint? Three copper. And two gold by drinks for everyone? Yes. Hm. I go up to the bartender, put two gold down, and I yell, This round's on me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck the town's guard. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Sorry. I, I walk right. in a few moments later and see Garp at the bar, and I am aghast to find him at the bar. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I like take a seat down on the table. Then I go and sit down. Separate. Well, Growl, Garp, uh, Arrakis. Did people cheer for me? There was a, Were you know, there were a couple drinks? of, oh, free drinks, free drinks. And then you're like, fuck the town guard. And everyone just, <clears throat> just oh, well. So it's okay, is it? Okay, well, if it's okay, I go and sit with them once it seems like it's fine. Mm hmm. It seems fine. fine. It's fine. Okay. So, Growl, what was this you were saying? You were saying, uh, I want to. I also want you to tell me, like, the people leaving. Like, if it looks like anyone's going to get the town guard. Like, leaving. I mean, in a people hurry. leave bars all the time, right? Is anyone leaving in a hurry and gives me a bad look on the way out? I'll let you know if anyone leaves in a hurry and gives you a bad look. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at Growl. What are you telling me that that town guard wanted to talk to you? Uh. Rackus was telling me. Yeah, he uh, he he grabbed me and then he pulled me behind a corner and then he said that uh, I was gonna I was gonna blow his cover, um, and then he asked me to meet him outside of town after. So did he ask me on a date? Is that I I don't I just don't understand. Did you know this guy before? He I know his name and that he's friendly. I don't remember where from though. I must have maybe when I. You know, when I was in the forest, I, I said, yeah, forest, and I was in the forest. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that's why I think his name's Forest. Maybe I met him there. He was a nice friend. Shrug. Well, what do you think, Araka? Should we go meet him? At the very least, he might be able to get the town's guard off me. Yeah, I agree. Let's go and meet him. It sounds like, well, if he's undercover in the guard, then he's obviously working against them. So, you know, 
enemy of my enemy and all that. I agree. Okay. I kind of finish my pint quickly and stand up. Let's, well, let's it's, go. It's not an hour after sundown say, yet. Hold that. Plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, we got time before sundown yet. Uh, I don't want to get you too drunk. People what didn't seem very uh, you know, Gop, keen on my message. Gop, I think uh, it's, it's, it's Autumn taught me this one. This is really important. The guards in the towns, you you must not anger them. No, no, you must not go up to them and say bad things or shove. They can put you somewhere where you can't, like a cage where you can't get us. Really important. You will <clears throat> do that in the future, okay? It's very wise, Grow. Gop can learn saying, a lot bro. from you. Uh, listen, why don't you, Gop, stay here? Uh, Grow, you stay here. I'll go to the bar and get us a drink. Um, Gop, do you want to? I think it's your aunt. I put my hand out. Pull out a, I pull out another gold and hand it to you. Thank you very much. I walk up to the bar near Neil. Mm -hmm. And I say to the barman. <clears throat> I wait my turn in the line. Mm -hmm. Hey there. Uh, can I get three pints, please? What do you The hate? bartender will slide you three pints as he fills them up one after another. Thank you, sir. How much was it again? Uh, that'll be nine copper. Nine copper. Amazing. I give him a silver. Keep the change. <laughs> All right. You tipped him. Nice. Yeah. I head back to the... Is uh... tipping customary here? It is never required or necessarily expected, but it is a nice way to establish a relationship with someone or you know stay on social terms a tip like that of you know one 11, was it one copper cents. on a nine copper bill is like a very reasonable very like that's a that's a fine tip mm, nice. I'm right to this um I take my drinks deftly holding three pints with two hands and uh, mm -hmm. head back to the table, putting them back down and say, well, cheers. Expensive drinks here. And I settle into my chair. Where's my change? Oh, I tipped him. Yeah, but he gave you gold. Did you? <laughs> so we're having the, these sorts of conversations, very yeah. casual bar chat. I, I eventually give him his change. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's swapping the and, music. Well, yeah, yeah. Because it's a casual bar chat that's happening when, sure, someone, some enterprising young citizen, maybe someone from the tavern, maybe one of the people that watched you walk into the tavern, maybe someone that walked by the tavern and saw inside, who knows who this fine, upstanding citizen of the law is, but someone has ratted you out to the cops and uh the door will open and standing in the doorway is a, a trio of soldiers and as eyes fall on the soldiers the din in the room will quiet and as each person quiets down everyone else starts to look around to see why everyone's quieting and soon all eyes are it's like on the record the... scratch moment the mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone looks on over. I yeah. bet you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is a terrible map for what we're trying <clears> to do. <throat> I, uh, I stand up from the table. As mm -hmm. the bar goes quiet and the three guards walk in. And I say... Uh, yeah, well, uh, let's be clear. They, they haven't walked in. There's one in the doorway and two right behind them. They're, they're not all entering the room yet, but they're blocking yeah. the sole exit. Yeah. Okay, I didn't stand up yet, though. Mm -hmm. I neck my pint. One of them will pull a short sword from his side, <clears throat> point it in the direction of the frog. Well, well, well. Look what found its way, hippity-hoppying, back into our custody. Now, you want to take this the hard way, don't you? It gives you a smile. And just uh, sit there. I stand up and say, there's no need for violence here, friends. Why don't you let me buy you a few drinks and we'll uh, let bygones be bygones. They see the unfamiliar wizard before them. 
Well, there's an unconscious guardsman. And he assaulted other city guard. You can't be doing that. There's a, a price to be paid. You know. Also, sullied the good name of the swamp side guards. That's a crime. You know, my friend here was just, uh, he's a bit hot-headed. He was, he was defending our gnome friend. And from what I could see, the unconscious guard uh, fell of his own accord. Can't really blame us for that. Or him for that. Uh, if it wasn't for frog legs over there, wouldn't be in that state. So as far as I see it, he's responsible. Well, <clears throat> Now, come friend. on. Hippity hoppity. Don't. Don't call me that. He says. All right, Mr. Ribbit. Why don't you take that weapon out? Give me a good reason to cut you down. Or, if you want to be, uh... I bet you come over here, you take this, and he'll pull out a bag, and it has some coins in it, and get you and your friend some drinks, and we'll call it a night. He jingles it. There's at least 15 think, coins in there. You think you can bribe the Swampside constables in broad uh, public like this? Friends share food and company. You could sit at our table and eat with us. Yeah? We can be friends. Right? The See? only roof I'm sharing with this guy is the prison cell. And I'll be on the outside watching. As the, as the jailer. What do you want me to do here, Arrakis? <clears throat> well, I don't think we should, I, I lean in a little bit, you know? I don't think we should be killing the guards in the middle of the tavern, for one. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I look around. Is there like a, is there like a, like a stairway up? Is there like a window? Is this one of your hell um, There is a window with shutters that is closed because it's chilly and um, there's not great insulation or heating. And so as the sun goes down, they shut the shutters to try and keep all the heat provided by the fireplace in here. Um, but there's people between you and it. And, uh, you know, maybe there's just these three guards and maybe they've positioned people around the building. Who knows? You can't see through the shutters. I sigh. You're not giving me many options here, Rackus. <laughs> Sorry, me? What do you want me to do? You want me to fight the guards off? I don't know. Uh, we just we sit here in front of them while the guards are kind of, I assume. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... What, what, <laughs> I, don't, okay, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> What's the situation between <laughs> us and the guards? Is there people between us and them? or? Uh-huh. There yeah, there's like two tables between you and them. And everyone's still sitting at their tables and gone quiet. And the two of you are turning and talking to each other. And the guards are standing in the doorway. The lead guard with a short sword out. The other ones behind, like, leaning forward and eager, but no weapons in hand yet. Um, and it's just a tense moment with the little bit of hushed conversation. And yeah. clearly the three of you are together. I, uh, I... I openly like sort of crack my fingers like this and I start sort of like limbering up my arms like making weird like shapes with them and murmuring a little bit <clears throat> kind of like mimicking uh, you can see the people beginning to push their stools and chairs back and soon everyone is moving to the edges of the <clears throat> tavern the first guard will step inside Wait. the second one will follow I'll help one of the ladies up and, I like, want to take her chair and like pull it out from under her and like lead her away Give me a charisma check while you do it. <sighs> nice. Oh my God. Every it's time. graceful. It's polite. It's elegant. She gives you a bit of a curtsy um, just out of habit. I kiss her hand. Was, you know. I go for a hand kiss. Did she, did she pull it away? Uh, nope. This is a tense, awkward situation. Everyone's sort of stunned. You pulled the chair out. You escorted her to the side of the room. You kissed her hand. She's looking dumbfounded. The people that she's with are looking at her dumbfounded. They're going to talk about this for days. I Go ahead, Grab. You guys don't want to fight, right? 
Not really. What, what would you do? What would Grau do? <laughs> The gnome is pretty small and inconspicuous, right? Yeah. Sure, but you're sitting at the table with all these other people, so you you've been noticed. So for if certain. I if I like get up and go to maybe a corner where I'm not really seen, people are gonna follow me with their eyes and kind of look at me and. Yeah, it'll be s well seen that well, you walked if away. I do but maybe it, no one cares. If I do maybe it no while, cares. yeah. Because Arrakis and Gra uh, Garp are currently the only ones, like, doing shit. Like, making a fuss, doing stuff. As people are, like, moving their chairs and Garp does his thing of, like, helping the lady and, like, kissing the hand. I think if you wanted to, that's probably, like, the time for you to what? scurry away at the best chance. No, I think yeah. whatever I'm trying to do is a really bad idea, actually. It's not. <laughs> I'm yeah, just going to... Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just going to... I think... <laughs> For a second, I thought maybe I could make a distraction by making a bear appear in this tavern and <laughs> having a big ruckus occur. But I feel like this is going to end really badly for the bear, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to not do that. And it's, You know what? I'm just going to sit here and watch this go on because I I got nothing to lose here. Uh, Neil, it's, it's twilight outside, right? It's getting dark. Uh-huh. What's the lighting situation in here? Dim. There's a, a fire that keeps the place, and the, there's a little bit of cooking on, and there are uh, a couple of lanterns, but they don't provide great, like, right, right underneath the lanterns is pretty well lit, but everything else is sort of a, it's a dim tavern. How many sort of lanterns are we talking about? Three, and plus a fireplace. The ones where the guards are, uh, is there a particular lantern that they are illuminated by? Um... No, the the front door doesn't have great illumination. It's more like lanterns are in the corners, and there's a fireplace in a corner, mm -hmm. um, and then the do doorway is in like the middle of the I, um, one of the walls. So you would say that they're in shade. They're oh, in they're absolutely in shadows. That's fantastic to know. While Nick is looking around and doing this, I will whisper to Growl and say. I'm not very fast. You can go outside and meet us at the back. And you can turn into a bear, into yourself, without anyone seeing you. Would it be okay if I hopped on your back and rode you away? <laughs> and then we can go meet the town's guard who we're supposed to meet. I say to Rao, a.k.a. Pichow. You mean to reset yeah, please, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I whisper to Grau. I say, Grau, if it's okay with you, could you do me a favor and sneak outside and sneak in the back? Um, go outside, be in the back. If you would, turn into a bear with no one seeing you, so I may hop on you in like a minute or two uh -huh. and then ride you out of town because I'm not very fast and we're about to get into a tussle here. <laughs> um... I was going to remember the meat pies that you bought him. <laughs> and he's going to try to sneak out the back somehow. As he starts well, moving, I start first like, off, twirling. What back? I think yeah. I said earlier that there's, there's the front door and there's some windows. Yeah, yeah. so he can, he can go out the front door probably when our tussle starts happening inside the barn. Mm. Okay, okay. Cool. Um... <clears throat> All right, I'm feeling. So I'm feeling in the meantime, you're just chilling there, Growl. Yeah. Well, I think if the opportunity arises, I'll try to get out. If I feel like attention, is some attention is somewhere else right now, right? Okay. Roll initiative. Yeah. All right, you're rolling initiative. Yeah. Are we um, rolling initiative? Okay. Yeah. I start twirling my <laughs> my glaive. Uh, really okay, cool, now, like. Really cool, like, but we're, we need to talk for just a moment because a glaive is a nice, long pole arm. Great oh, sorry, reach, I don't know why super I great. In with, a, with a three. I should be rolling on a plus nine, is what I meant. Yeah. Um, the glaives are maybe a little hard to use indoors, you know? that Especially that roof is going to be a problem. 
Um, so I think if you're going to be making any glaive Piercing. attacks inside... Not slashing. There... Hopefully you won't have to make any attacks, mate. Piercing. It's a glaive. I can stick. It's not just a slashing weapon. Uh, yeah, but it is a... Let me take a look at a picture of Reach the glaive two. here for a moment. Is it only piercing? I thought it was a piercing-slashing weapon. It's slashing piercing weapon. and slashing. I can choose. Yeah. So indoors, or in a space like this, I would use the piercing and to not get the disadvantage. Just like if I was in like um, like a cave, and there's like a cave ceiling above me, I'm not going to be slashing. I'm going to be piercing. Yeah, I think a glaive is close enough to a spear that that would work. Some weapons, like a longsword, for example, is piercing and slashing, but to mm -hmm get the full use of a longsword you need to use both opportunities and if you were going to use just one or the other you would be having a problem but a glaive is sort of essentially a spear with a slightly different spearhead that's sharper on one side so yeah. you could uh, you could do a bunch of thrusting poking attacks and be fine. cool all right okay uh, and we're gonna have one two three guards don't know why they want to die, but they do. And they're going to roll with their short swords. Okay. Carp rolled a 22 for initiative. Arrakis, you rolled a 6 with Spook. Um, Sorry, I rolled a 19. I'm an idiot. Oh, shit. The gods okay. got well, far you've far got your... <clears throat> God, they rolled really well on their initiative. Uh, the first guard will step in as everyone's like moved to the sides, and the you know the the wizard did some stretching exercises, and the the bullywug whispered something to the gnome, who kind of like made himself just a little bit standoffish. And the first two town guards will walk in and first you know point a short sword at the wizard and say, "This is none of your business, citizen. You stand back." I take a few steps um, back, and then will walk towards the bullywug sword in hand the ready to action what so says, where's the just give me a reason where's the third guard in the doorway the third <coughs> guard hasn't gone yet and is standing in the doorway can we put them like yeah. how they how they would be inside of the tavern yeah let me just get i don't like any of the tavern options that we had here we just do so it in I'm the do a yeah i'm just gonna draw like a little building um, so we're going to do a black building and we're going to have the, the doorway be this fucking ugly blue thing. We're going to change to, uh, orange is the doorway. And then we're going to do like a couple of little tiny windows like this. Actually, not in this corner because that's the fireplace corner. I'm going to do red for fireplace corner. And it's a tavern, right? So, um, you know, the tables are all pretty close. These are five by five squares, but really in a tight tavern like this, you're going to have, you know, four or five people standing around a five by five square, uh, a yeah. five by five table. Um, so where are we? So We're like in the back of the room or? You are... Uh, yeah, I think you all were, you were off in this side, um, but now that you're standing up for like combat and everyone else is scurrying to the walls, and there's tables in the way. It's all just sort of like a messy situation, um, and the first guard will step in here. Um, he says like, "Get out of the way, citizen. This doesn't concern you." And Arrakis takes a step back, and the first guard will do that, and the second one will do that. Come in here. First guard will level me? his sword in the direction of Garp and say, give me a reason, and ready his attack. The second one will step here next to you, Garp, as well. Uh, actually, he's going to stand here. He doesn't trust Arrakis, um, but he'll keep his weapon pointed at Garp, but he's like, he doesn't want to expose his flank to Arrakis, and Arrakis will go. So I rolled into initiative to cast this spell. <clears throat> um, if I choose not to cast it now, I'd lose it, right? Yes. But they're saying just give me a reason, which makes me think that they're not actually going to attack. Yeah. Are you, so you have been casting though. You've been chanting the words to a spell. I guess I kind of missed that detail. I guess so, yeah. 
But I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's in a loud tavern. There's probably people, or is it? Is it, is it super? Quiet? No, it's gone dead quiet. Yeah. Everyone's moved to the corners and walls away from this. Yeah, I think the second guy, instead of uh, leveling, looking at Garp, will put his sword in your direction with a ready to attack and say, "You know, stop, stop that chanting, or I swear to God, I'll cut your tongue out and nail it to the church wall." What's the situation here? If he's readying attack when I cast a spell. How, is that how it would work? If I go through with the spell, he'd attack um, me. Well, that... he's giving you an order. And you can stop ca You can stop casting your spell immediately, or you can continue channeling it. And um, it is he's up to him for to not decide you. Yeah. when. Yeah, like maybe if you don't stop instantly, he attacks you. Maybe he gives it like a few seconds. Um, you don't know how the guard is going to behave, but he does point a sword in your direction and says, stop casting that spell. Does Garp have his weapon on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so when he says stop casting that spell, what do you do, I stop, Arrakis? I stop casting. Okay. Then he will point his weapon in Garp's direction. You will lose your spell, yeah. save your life, have a turn. Uh, I would. Movement, I suppose, but... Uh, you move, can you I, stand. Can I get stand. away from the, the ruckus or not? You could move here, I suppose, and just kind of, you know, put your back against the corner and get out of the way. I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, other town guard hangs out outside of the doorway. Garp? I your ready buddy stopped casting I his spell. Ready an attack. Mm -hmm. um, does that go into the next round, or does it end here? If you ready attack and they've ready attack, if everyone's got a ready attack, then we just have a Mexican standoff. Yeah, I think that's what's happening here. Yeah, that is what's yeah, happening. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. So I ready an mm -hmm. attack. Um, just trying to think of what I'd say. I don't want to shed any blood here. You mm -hmm. Over a small fight in the town earlier. I'm mm -hmm. willing to pay the fine or anything like that. And let's move on with it. I obviously didn't think it was a big enough deal for this ruckus. I came back to the tavern to have a few drinks. How much is the fine? I say with my pole arm. My guard throws like a look. There's people here. You know, there, there's a population around. And however corrupt you may think town guardsmen might be, there's a certain yeah. level of, you know. You, what are you saying? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying fine, right? Yeah. And the town guard, I mean, you did just try and bribe a moment ago, and they do have to sort of maintain the law and uphold all the things. And he looks at you and says, it's not a fine, it's time in jail. And you'll pay it, or you'll bleed here. <sighs> but you don't want to spend time in jail. There's no water there. You're going to get real dry. He thinks he could actually die if he goes to jail. <laughs> if they're not going to water him. Um, I We go to the next round. Wait, can I do something? Can I do some more movement now? Sure, what do you want to do from here? I want to squeeze out between them. I was like, sorry, I need to get out of this situation. Can I, like, get away? Give me a charisma check. Let's see. Because you did... You, you politely stopped casting a spell. Um, <sighs> Three plus nine is twelve. It's awkward. You say, can I get out of here? And a guard shakes his head and goes, not yet. You stay right there. I look out this window you and try and pick. Can I look out the window? Um, the shutters are closed. You could, you know, unlatch them and open them, but it would be yeah, no, pretty it's, apparent. Yeah, that's fine. What about you, Grau? The situation's gotten extremely tense. Yeah, I kind of also want to shuffle on out of there. Um, Some <clears throat> shutters behind you? Um... <laughs> uh, can I? Can I fit through there? <laughs> you, as a gnome, could fit through there. If you needed to. Um. Uh, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> uh, Grau's gonna say, "Uh, I, uh, I would like to be excused, please." <laughs> He's gonna try yeah. to bolt out of the shutters. 
Excellent. You will bolt out of the shutters, and uh, you will find that there's a, a town guard in the alleyway behind, <clears throat> like standing between the the windows. <laughs> and as you you pop out of the shutters, he'll just step right in front of you and goes, "Where do you think you're going, uh, little guy?" Hello, I'm Grau. I'm, there's some trouble in there, and I don't want any part of it. So I I just want to, you know. Stroll on out of here. Give me a charisma check, Grau. The dump stat. That's a believable Grau. story. And you're just a little no. Yep. He, uh, uh, he just jerks here. his head to the side and lets you run. 16 plus 7 for a 23. Yeah. That nice roll. Yeah. Nice roll. Not bad. Where is, um, where's the front door? Uh, well, you're outside. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just... Oh, oh, I see. The front door would be um, over here. Oh my Many God. people are outside that right now. <laughs> Next round initiative, Quibu? Yeah, but everyone's just got readied actions, so... Um, well, yeah, I'm, okay, then I'm just going to speak then. Oh, wait, sorry. real yeah. quick, give me like an impression of what what's the situation like outside, how many people is there, and what's what's going on? There's maybe 20 people who are watching because, uh, you know, a handful of guards have showed up at a place and weapons are drawn, and there's looky loos who are watching from a distance. There's people in um, upstairs windows and people in... Uh, the street and people in the uh, closing market who are watching. There's a couple of people like packing up their stalls that are putting away the last bit of goods and are quickly like rolling up their rugs and trying to hurriedly pack everything away before a fight breaks out. I don't feel like I can turn into a bear safely anywhere, can I? Well, you would definitely in, be seen, um, 100%. Yeah, I'm not doing that shit. If you ran away a little ways, you might be able to find a a spot, but... Ellie. Yeah, I want to try um, to find... Because if you look, this building is actually, like, right over here. Yeah. And so you've popped out in this alleyway. Maybe you could run off this way. You know, maybe you could go hide under this tree, um, dive in this pile of leaves. I don't know. Like, I'm... Th there might be cover somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to try to find a place where I feel like nobody's watching me. Yeah. Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just... Oh, my... 19 I'm, plus I'm, 4. I'm just nice with it. Fucking... Archie, Jesus. Yeah, you walk around a building, and all of a sudden you realize that nobody's there, and you can... Okay. And I want to, like, circle back around however long that takes me. So, like, here, into here, into here. And just kind of mm -hmm. casually stroll through the streets, the bear that I am. <laughs> we should probably Excellent. do our round. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before he gets there, you said you wanted to talk, Garp? How about we don't do this inside the tavern? How about we go outside and handle this like gentlemen and a frog? No need to scare all these fine folks. Have you hopping on rooftops again? No, I don't think so. I like you just where you are. Why don't you put that glaive down? Set it I... down on the floor so we don't have to <clears throat> worry the good citizens of Swampside. Say the, uh, God, do you mind if I talk to my friend for a moment? I'm gonna take a step back. I, I will. I do here. take that step back. I, I can. Mm -hmm. I confer, and I say, you know, a night or two in prison might be better than getting to a fight here. <sighs> I don't think they're gonna give me any water, and I'll die. Well, maybe we can. Uh... I have. Negotiate that. I mean, listen, I can try and cast a spell, but they're so close to me here that they'll likely cut me down before it goes off. How about you just get behind me? I'm in enough trouble. Well, what's it gonna be? With ice murdering guards in the street here. This is I'm not a good plan. Anyone. We just need to. We just need to get out of here. I got Rao already in the back. The oh, fuck is that? Comes the cry from outside <laughs> as uh, the bear does what exactly? He's just casually strolling through the streets. Just no worry um, in the world. I, I'm so sorry, but I attack this guard. All right. The outside guard goes to like scare off the bear, you know, waving his sword around and shouting at the I bear. I have reach two, and I think I should mm -hmm. get this for free because we're all at Mexican standoffing. I stepped away. They didn't use their attack yep. of opportunity, and nope. I've been ready. Yep. Uh, I think you've got reach, and you can just stab them. 
Okay, I'm not going to kill him here. So, if you want a... Would you really call for a called shot to hit a non-vital organ? If you want to do non-lethal damage, you attack at a penalty of four to hit. Half your da You do half damage with an attack, and half of that half is real, while the other half of that half is temporary. Can't do that. Yeah. It's your regular attack. It's way harder to just to you know knock someone out than it is to kill them. What do you think? It's a critical hit. It's a natural 19. Your glaive cuts right underneath the leather armor and goes right for the belly, almost killing the guard. <sighs> Um, who, well, that will trigger well, that's not a the other, this is a crit. Oh, right. Add me another D10 in there, please. <sighs> oh, my God. A total of 17 damage. The guard's, the guard is gone. He's not dead. He's dying. Sure. Okay. He, he's going to bleed he's out in the well, next hold on. few minutes. He's going to die. It's still my turn. I want to say something. Save your friend. Save his life. We're leaving. Uh... I start walking out. Yeah, uh, uh, this guy's going to use his, you know, held action to stab at Arrakis. For fuck's sake, no, I Arrakis knew that was me. going to happen. Yeah. For fuck you, he... I mean, you stab the one guy, he just quickly goes and slashes at Arrakis. You it's didn't a get four. behind me. Okay. It's a, it's a miss. You know, the, the thrust, actually, that should be short sword, not arming sword. Um, the thrust goes, you know, just uh, behind you, skirts the wall, and now we will roll initiative. Yeah, obviously he's gonna attack you. You're you're in league. You said let me talk to my friend, and then your friend attacked. No, I think it's fine that he attacked. I just thought Rackus got behind me. Fuck. Hmm. Jump. Alrighty, what do we got? Um, so this guard is gone. This Can you keep one... track of that guard's HP, please? Three, three. Three. He's a dead man. There's no way no one's getting to him in three rounds. How do you know? What do you mean? Just experience oh playing D&D? Just you know. keep track, please. All right. Uh. All right. Arrakis, with an amazing initiative of a natural one, which is great. Uh, you go at two. What are you going to do? Uh, I pull out the spell components for this spell, which is non-existent. And I cast, I hold my hand in the air and I say some arcane words that sound vaguely cold. And I cast Chill Touch <laughs> on my hand, encompassing it in a blue glow. And my Excellent. question for you, Neil, is can I make an attack at the end of casting Chill Touch or not? Yes, you can. So, but if I make an unarmed attack, he gets an attack of opportunity on me, is that right? Um, I had is what I'm looking through the book for right now because I last week I read through the making touch attack sections of the books and this week I forgot what I read last week Useful. Uh, because that happens let's see touch attack what about touch hey this is just three guards left we're gonna fuck these guys up yeah these guys are fucked um, Unwilling targets. Cell caster must make a successful attack roll. Calculates stack on normally. Modifies the blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. A character attempting to punch, wrestle, or overbear an armed opponent can do so only by placing himself at great risk, making matters worse. An armed defender is automatically allowed to strike with his weapon before the unarmed attack is made. But it specifically says punch, wrestle, or overbear, and I think that's because you're closing to really, like, actually land a blow. And if all you're trying to do is touch them, I don't think it provokes an attack of opportunity. But if you tried to punch him in the face, it absolutely would. Because all you gotta do is, you just gotta, like, you know, you just have to do a gentle ball tap, and you can be a lot more um, careful with your situation, and that's it. Yeah, I do want to. I don't know if your friends ever do this, but they like wave their hands in front of your face and then backhand you in the balls. That's what I do. <laughs> My friends have never done that to me. Um. <laughs> just fucking hit him, boom! Right on the right on the sack. Go for it. Um, so uh, I, I think, as a level two wizard with ten strength, I am just rolling a d twenty. 
Yeah. Uh, but yep, yep, yep. I only need to hit AC 10, is that right? You hit their touch AC, I think. Yeah. Their touch AC. Uh, and I think chill touch is fine to do that. There's this very specific passage in this book over here that talks about this and gives exact spells that will work. Touch. Touch. Is this the right book? I'm changing my initiative because it's. I'm changing what I'm doing, but it's not changing my order. I, it just. Just want it to be known. Hmm. Either one twelve or one twenty. Which be one twelve, right? Page. So you're trying to uh, chill touch him. What does it do? Armor breaching spells uh, is chill touch. Exactly. Yeah. So all you, you don't need to worry about their armor. All you need to do is hit AC 10. Okay. On a D20. D20 plus no roll mods. Four. Whoosh. Sadly. You go to tap him, but he's seen the familiar hand, hand, backhand to the balls. It's a game <laughs> these guards play yeah, all the time. I already know. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the sword comes down, and you have to pull your hand back at the last minute to keep your hand from getting chopped off. Yeah. Uh, and growl. Let me get it. Um, what are you doing, growl? Actually, your initiative should be six, but you still go next. I mean, like, I don't... I feel like I don't... No, I've, I, I feel like I know that there's a fight going on inside. Um, I th Are you going to maul people? Well, no, not yet. <laughs> Uh, I want to wait for... I I've got clear instructions here, but there's a guard here trying to, like, scare me off. He's waving his sword. I'm kind of just going to ready, mm -hmm. like, an attack in case this guard, A, either attacks me or B, runs inside to attack my friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Well, the guard is just sort of... Well, his turn's not up yet. Yep. Um, the next one. This is the guy from outside... All the commotions going on. He's going to go to the window. He's got a thrusting weapon. It's a narrow window, though. I'm going to give him a penalty to hit as he tries to stab through the window. But he's got also a say that the on window you. is closed. No, that's the window that Grau just left oh, through. Oh, true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the flank and the penalty for stabbing through the window will negate each other. Um, and this is actually a short sword, which does d6. It will stab with the 12, which miss. is a, a miss against you, leaving us with the next guard. This is the one near Arrakis that you just tried to tap in the balls. And he will also um, stab at you with the short sword with a 15 to hit uh, that will succeed yep. and do you a whopping six points of damage, bringing you to that two thing. out of eight hit points. The last guard is outside. And he's shouting at the bear, and he's shouting to the people, There's a bear! Get out of here, you stupid bear! Go back and eat a honey cake or something! Come on! And um, he's just trying to scare you off, but he's not actually threatening you. Uh, With your, your mixed human intelligence, you can tell these are empty threats. Yeah. Something your, your true bear form would never have understood. Yeah, and I mean, like, I've encountered these exact scenarios before as, my, as, as mm -hmm. a more intelligent bear as I've wandered off, so I know what's going on here. Can I attack well, through Arrakis' square? Yeah, we're not. That's far enough. That's it. You've got to... Um, if it's not, back. then I could go here, and I'm not provoking an attack of opportunity. Maybe I am, because I'm technically no longer... No, I think the, the cover of the window would prevent any attack of opportunity, because you I just mean, slip into the side. Then I yeah. am going to move here. There's no reason. Perfect. Um, here's my glaive attack. I don't want to oh, kill these guys. Another critical hit. You can't help but kill them. 11 Fuck plus me. 7 is 19, 18 damage. Is he dead? Oh my god. Yeah, he's dead as well. They're both fucking dead. I look at Gop. Uh... <laughs> I think we should leave. You just see, yeah, you just see Garp, like, literally just stab through them and, like, pull it out, and then they're just on the ground. They're done. Yeah. He's just fucking dead. Um... <sighs> Arrakis, we, we need to save them. You stabilize him, I point to the guy, and I'll stabilize him. And at the end of the round, instead of using my second attack, I will attack my cloak. 
and make some makeshift <laughs> bandages. Next round, you can make a, a bandage check uh, if that's what you want to do. If you want to get out of here, Rackus, you can. I, I just don't feel good about killing these people. They're, they're throwing their lives away for nothing. They're gonna die anyway. Like even stabilized, though, I'm not gonna make it after a blow like that. But uh, I roll initiative. All right, what are you rolling initiative for? Movement. All right. Um, and Garp, you're rolling initiative to bind his wounds. I did a three, yeah. Yep. And uh, okay, Rao, uh, you're you're first again. Wow. Um. Can I? I probably can't hear what they were talking about in the tavern. That doesn't seem very realistic. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think know, that this guy out here is shouting and making a lot of noise. I'm gonna try to intimidate him back. I'm gonna like snarl at him and like. I'm gonna do like a. I just want this guy to like leave so that we can get out of here. So I'm gonna snarl at him. I'm gonna growl. I'm gonna, um, look at him and I'm gonna show him my teeth and, you know, mm. gonna try to to do back to him what he what he what he did to me. Mm -hmm. Give me a charisma check. Absolutely. Let's see how badly. Can you roll another form. one? I mean, can't... should he get an advantage? He's a fucking bear. Well, I want to see what he does. What his role is for his bearness, and I will appropriately. <laughs> oh my, it's another. He's just, he's just fucking seventeen plus seven, twenty-four. All right, so this guy's going to get some penalties on his morale check as the bear, like, rears up on its hind legs, its claws in the air, the drool dripping from its face in the middle of the street, and the, the guard is going to, uh, guys, bear, good citizens, good citizens, get out of the way, I'll protect you, bear, get out of the way, um, and begins to fall back. You know, people leave their wares in the town square, uh, and the, the guard fumbles for his whistle, Gives it a little toot. Um, you've cleared the square. Inside, Arrakis, you're up next. Yeah. Um, I go to leave on my... No, I just leave. I was going to kill the guard, but I just go to leave. I come out. I hear them yep. screaming about the bear, and I figure that this is going to be Growl. Yep, I, you get outside, and there's Growl. I recognize him. I look around. Where are the other... other I look for other guards. Uh, there's one other guard that's just, you know, south in the area who's leading the good citizens away and blowing on his whistle. Yeah. Um, and that's what you see. Okay. I look to, like, head out this direction. Okay. The other guard. Now, it's a narrow window. It's a bad idea to crawl in through a window when you can't see where your enemy is and they've got a spear. That's a really bad idea. Uh, so this guy is going to... Wait, he should have move. a perception check to hear me tell Arrakis to come and save their friends. He's going to move to this window, and um, I guess he needs to, like, strength check it open. He's got, like, advantage on the strength check because... Or let's call it plus four because it's not, like... They're just, like, shitty shutters. Um, but a natural one, he uses his shoulder to bash in the window, and he must just hit it in the wrong spot. Or maybe it's an exceptionally well-made window. Maybe the frame, like, sits against some stone, and so he shoulders it and just, like, steps away, like, rubbing his shoulder in pain. And then he goes to, like, you know, push it with his hands and, like, drops his sword. He bends over to pick up his sword and cuts his finger on his sword. He fucking... And he just spends his whole turn in a, a series of unfortunate events with that natural one to break open that window, leaving Garp inside. This man's dying. We should this do man's shit like dying. this more They're often. Dead. This is easy. We could take over this whole town if we wanted to. <laughs> uh, what do you I, do, Garp? They're not dead. Stop saying that. Okay? There's probably a cleric in this town. Garp sees a lot of himself in these stupid fucking guards, even though when he's outmatched. Um, and there's some stuff in his past that also reminds him of this uh, even when he's outmatched he's always fighting and he does feel some sense of i don't know how to explain it you know how when you like um swat a fly you just kind of can feel bad because you know it, there's mm. nothing you can fucking do it's kind of how he feels about these people like garp thinks so highly and so much of himself of himself that um 
Yeah, so he is going to try and stabilize this guy. He's going to spend mm -hmm. an action. Yeah. And then he's going to... Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's, he's going to spend an action trying to stabilize. Did his best. R runs over here, and that's where he'll end his turn. And he'll yell outside for... Um, he'll say, <laughs> Bear! I need another minute. Just wait. Bear, what do you do? I, I, I sit down in the town square and s s scratch my neck. All right. Uh, Garp, roll me initiative against the solar remaining guardsman. All right. Um, the guardsman has decided the windows are for dummies and is going to spend the movement to walk around the building, which is not that much. Nope. And he'll come to the front door and he'll see the he frog. Sees me there. on my knees. Oh, perfect. Ha bandages plus in two hand. to attack. That's fine. Bandages in hand. You can attack me if you'd like. And plus one for flanking. It's a plus three to hit. Oh, it's a it's a seven on the attack roll. Plus three is ten. Do, what do you have any? Oh, your armor is your thick hide. Yeah. Uh, so ten against fourteen is a miss. You can feel the blade like hitting the back of your cloak, but not actually slicing through your skin. Um, and then you know thrusting alongside you, but not not doing you any real damage. Um, I don't know if you can continue to bandage a person while being attacked. Like, I don't know if you can just sit there that's fair. and I, yeah, absorb no, that's blow totally after fair. blow. But um, I will instead, like, kind of stand up, like, grab the guy and just huge. shake him and look him in his fucking eyes and just say, your friend is dying in there. I'm trying to bandage him. I will attempt to strength check and like grab him and like the hold him. The six foot three bullywug stands up in front of the guard who was just stabbing at him. And uh, strength check goes, here. Yeah. 20. Um, you will be exposing yourself to an attack of opportunity. You're making an unarmed Later. attack against him at plus four. One uh, I don't think it's plus four anymore because I stand up, no? Uh, no, it's plus four because you're making an unarmed attack against a person who has a weapon. They've got plus four to hit oh. and okay. damage against you when you're making an unarmed attack. And damage? Oh, let me, I'm double checking it because I can't remember. <laughs> um, I wish we would have known that in Tombs of Scorer when people were trying to grapple me. Well, let's you live in your uh, uh, da, 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 da. I think that's one of the rules that we often forget about, but I just yeah. read it a moment ago that's when we were one. talking with Nick. Since his opponent must get very close, the defender has a plus four to his attack and damage rolls. Wow. If the attacker survives. he must survives. get very close. Yeah, because you're grabbing him. If you're <clears throat> yeah, a character attempting fair. to punch wrestler over bear. Yeah. Do I need to do an attack to hit then? Um, yeah, you, you'll check? need to do a, a melee attack to grab because he's is <coughs> resisting, and then you'll have to strength check him to like lift him off his feet. D20 plus three? Yeah. Uh, plus an extra, no, wait. Um, I think I get a plus an extra one for my strength. Wait, Mainly you should get adjust. plus two from level and one from strength. Yeah, so it should be okay, d20 so plus, plus three. three. Yeah. Use the hit. 17, Perfect. Hit AC. That's a grab. Yep. And the my guard strength will... strength is above. Your strength... Uh, the guard attacks at plus one normally, so it's a total plus five against you. He goes to stab you, and it goes, like, between your arm and your body. It just sort of cuts your cloak as you grab him. And you don't have enough to, like, actually lift him, but you can grab and shake the guard and yell at him that his friends are dying. I will um, grab this... and shake him and say, your friends are dying, and I'm trying to save them. I've bandaged one. Can you go get a fucking cleric? I need to check his morale modifiers because he has... Oh, where's my DM screen? DM screen. Uh, da, 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 no enemy slain. And has lost 50% of his group. So he's got a minus six to his morale modifier. He needs a three or lower on a 2d10 and rolls a seven. So the guard fucking drops his sword and bolts and runs into town. I'll use my next shouting. turn to help this guy and then I'm fucking off. All right. And then the party fucks off into the woods. I jump on the bear. 
<laughs> people see me leaving <laughs> on a bear with a half fucking cut cloak. Mm hmm. Okay. We're going to take our last break, and when we come back, the party will be regrouping outside of town. Growl following the familiar scent of Arrakis. Uh, uh, Garp riding Growl for as long as Growl will let him. And uh, we'll see you soon. Before we take our break, make sure you go to patreon.com slash save or die and join, if you would. Um, join at the Goblins here, and you can check out our after show. We do it after almost every single uh episode so yeah check it out help Thanks. us Probably fund do. um the recovery of uh potato mcwhiskey he's in dire need of medical care right now so if the country of ireland has failed him hello everybody and welcome back to save or die outcasts so party yes you're outside it's now definitely dark. Oh hey, God. we're meeting the guy. Yeah, oh, okay. we're gonna meet him outside Justin. of town. Well, yeah. before you meet the Just guy. Just in time. Is there any hawking amongst the party members? Well, I'm a bear, a... so. Yeah, well, I'd like yeah. you know. Let's get out of the immediate town before we start chatting. Yeah, we're probably out of the it... town in the spot, ready for the guy to show up, and <clears throat> we can have some conversations mm -hmm. here. A, uh, a cool rain begins to descend. You know, it's October when the rains do fall. It's already kind of crisp outside. Temperatures are getting low. And now it's some water on top of it. And Garp, your cloak is torn to pieces between yeah. combat and ripping straps off of it to, to mend people's wounds. So you're going to need a new cloak. Arrakis, your beautiful robes also have been cut through. Is this the first damage you sustained this whole campaign? I don't uh, think so. It might be. Yeah, I think it is. It, it might is, be. Yeah. You've got a small Garble... wound in your clothes. Mm -hmm. Garp will laugh here. Ugh, I've always hated guards. <laughs> they used to keep me locked up. It's not really a laughing matter, Garp. We could have been killed in there. And, you know, I've got enough problems in this place without you causing additional ones. Then why did you take me to the bar? I didn't. In fact, I warned you it was not a good idea. <laughs> Well, then why did we go? You could have said no. Because you're reckless, that's why. That's why we went. Well, that's why so you control went. me like Renatus would. Yeah, okay. Well, if you're telling me that I'm in charge and I can tell you what to do, then I guess that's the end of this conversation. Follow me and keep quiet. Careful. He'll nod. He'll do it. I think uh, I will lead the way to the south side of town. Rao has a lot of feelings on this, but he's recently been instructed to bottle all those feelings up nice and tight. <laughs> so he's gonna stay a bear and just walk on along. Fucking base. August. All right. What's her name? August. Autumn. Autumn. Yeah. Autumn. Autumn is fucking base. Just bottle it up when you have problems. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well. Sometime later. You're looking for the spot. And this guy said, you know, meet me south of town in an hour. And that's not exactly like a great description, right? South is a a pretty big fucking area. Yeah. And the three of you are looking for what seems to be a reasonable meeting spot where maybe somebody could find you, uh, but would still be out of the way. And as you're walking around looking for this sort of thing, yeah. Um, you realize that this guy, who is he looking for? He's looking for a gnome. Yeah, well, you know, when we get in the south side of town, I say uh, relatively loudly, loudly. You know, how do you find the forest around here? Anyone know the way to the forest? <laughs> I'll say, I, I see what you did there. Uh, thank you. <laughs> It'll take a while, because he's not there right away. But as you walk around shouting about finding the forest yeah or loudly speaking um, eventually <clears throat> a familiar uh half elf half human will step into your visible range and say who the fuck are the three of you oh. and where the hell is that goddamned gnome 
This, uh... I point to the bear. Is the gnome. <laughs> Shall we you go ever, somewhere um, a bit more hidden? So, <laughs> Rao will attempt to speak, forgetting that he's in bear form. You ever, like, um, pick up a cup and you think it's, like, full? But it's empty and it's you just kind of reflexively... Your hand, like, jumps? Yeah, this is kind of what Grau's mouth is kind of doing. He's, like, trying to make talking motions, but he forgets that he's not... So it just kind of... It, it sounds horrid. Um... And he will stop himself, um, <clears throat> and he will, he only has one transformation left, so he's gonna go into orc form. Um. Oh, oh yes, hello, I'm Grau, yes, uh, yeah, Forrest, my, my, my friend, yes, hello. The fuck is this? Uh, a druid. How do you know our druid friend? I don't. Uh, you, you're Forrest. You're you're my friend. Yeah. How the hell do you know my name? I, 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 I don't, I don't know. With you, what, it, Frogman? Who are you? <laughs> I. You're causing trouble all over town today. Who the hell are you? I am Og, and he stops himself, <clears throat> clears his throat. I'm Garp. And red robes. It's an honor to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Forrest. My name's, uh, Arrakis. The name's Brutus. Just to be clear. Mm hmm Yeah, sure. I understand. Nice to meet you, Brutus. So, what are you here spying on? And how do you know my friend? I have no idea. He motions you know further south and we'll walk with you guys <clears throat> the number of people who know my real name i can count on maybe three hands wait one second do you do you guys by any chance have a cleric in this city he shrugs yeah sure okay thank you that was it Good. I, I don't I don't remember, but I know you're my friend, and I know your name is Forrest. I, I remember. I, we, we, you know, sometimes I, I meet people. Is is uh, maybe I I thought I meet you because you were in the forest. I thought maybe maybe you met me in the forest, and we, you know. I've never seen a bear like that before, and I certainly don't know any friendly orcs. Um. Y you ever fed a baby bear in the past and talked to them and told them your name? First off, bears don't know language. It's a common misconception. Oh, uh, secondly, does. not a bear like that. Look at the coloring. Did you see that? That sort of like bluish sheen to the, the fur? There's no sort of bear like that around here. Have you oh. ever met a bear in the forest? <laughs> You know Autumn? The witch? The, uh, um... Yeah, I know Autumn. Oh, well, we're a... Traitor. <clears throat> the murderer. Oh, what? A genocidal maniac. Oh, no, she's someone... Uh, maybe it's someone with the same name. She, Autumn is our friend. What do you mean? Oh. What do you mean? It's a common name, I guess. Who's this what about witch? about the witch? How is she a murderer? There's a warrior witch. Killed my people. Burned their forests. Maybe it's a different name. Yeah, I don't know. Also, it might be a relatively popular name, but it's not that much of a popular name for wizards. In a place like this. Hmm. <sighs> what did she do? She killed your people? Yeah. Why? Burn down their forests. Why? Who the fuck cares why? She's a genocidal maniac. Does she need a reason? Well, I'm not trying Does to justify her, her I'm, reasons. I'm not trying to victim blame here. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, I wish I did too. So, so what uh, are you doing here? Well, I'm not going to tell you until I know who the hell you are. Know that I can trust you. And right now, I got a whole lot of questions, starting with this gnome orc 
bear motherfucker. What I'm is Gao. your real form, shapeshifter? I, I, I'm I'm Kao. I'm, I'm I'm far away. Um, it's not important where I'm. Who? Where, what is? What even is our real form? Do we even know ourselves? Was I? I. Yes. Yes. This is my real form. Yes. That's his real form. He points to the bullywug. That's his real form. What's the your real shakes form? Shakes his head. Uh, I, I mean, it's... Uh, I, I, such questions so, so uh, could, could argue for, forever. Who, why is, uh, why, why is, uh, is our friend Autumn, is she not a good person? What uh? What we we? Are you here for me? Did you come here looking for me? What's uh, your business with me? I I don't I I didn't even know that I know you until I saw you. So I didn't even I thought you. So I I first we come here. We I thought you didn't exist, and then now you exist, and now I know your name. So Simple. by pure happenstance, you ran into me. And you know my real name, but you don't know where you know me, you don't know how you know me, and I certainly don't know you. And you just lucked into me walking down the street one day? Uh, this... You know what that sounds like, right? So, I mean, I mean, sometimes you come across a bear and you're like, oh yeah, I know his smell. Maybe you don't know where you smelled it or how you smelled it. Maybe you don't know who... But you know, you know, when when I go go eat the fish, I can I, I smell him and I know that he was there. You know, maybe it's kind of like that. He looks to the to Arrakis. Is it a problem that this guy's sort of making some level of sense? I thought so at first, but I'm learning to live with it. He's smarter than he looks, or wiser than he looks. Uh, smarter than your average bear, I suppose. <laughs> Oh. Exactly. Oh, most certainly, in fact. Oh, Listen, uh, yeah. Brutus, this even. is strange. Uh, you know, this is strange even given the obvious strangeness of the fact of our two friends here, I say motioning to the Bullywog and the Drip Orc. But uh, the fact that he knows who you are, but neither of you can remember each other is odd. Yeah. Whatever. How long have you been in this town? Like, what were you doing before? you ever had any dealings with wizards or anyone could have messed with your mind? Well, I'm an elf, so we're resistant to charms and sleeps and mind controlling effects like that. And uh, no, no one's tampered with my mind. And yes, I have plenty of experience with wizards. <clears throat> People were the world's foremost wizards for countless generations until they, he says, pointing to the, the pin on his shirt, came and burned Yara Orin to the ground and slew all of my people. Yeah. Verasi? They're, uh, mm -hmm. they're a bad lot. Well, I can tell you that, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know you, but I know them, and I'm no friend of theirs. So. Yeah, well, you've killed a couple of them today, so clearly you're not my enemy. You know, I didn't I'd... think Autumn worked for the Verasi clerics. She doesn't. Does she? I ask Brutus. Is she with? I them? don't know. I know there was a woman, a warrior I'll witch. I'll describe named Autumn. Her. They sound like the same people. I mean, red-robed half-elf is a. Uh, that's, that sounds like her. Yeah. I'll describe like her. I'll, I'll describe her like intricately, and maybe even explain the weird healing powers that she has. Maybe that like comes up as well. He'll shake his head. I I have, don't know her to be a cleric, mm. and the person you're describing sounds way too nice. She's not raining hellfire and ripping people to pieces and stealing babies from mothers and. You know, setting afire everything that could ever have meaned anything to her. Sounds like a completely different person. But physically, name? I don't know, maybe one's impersonating the other. 
And you're from where again? Yara Orin. The, the elven forest, he says, sort of like frustrated that he has to explain. Like when you ask your friend from... Uh, yeah. What the fuck is that place called? I don't um, know. When you ask your friend from Bavaria, whether she's from East Germany or West Germany, and she's like, I'm from Bavaria, and you're like, I don't... Is it East or West? And she's like, oh, it's West. And you're like, God Do I know any lore or anything about the wizard that he's talking about um, from my past or the burning of uh, Yara Orin? You know, the Verossi Empire did a bunch of shit. They fought with elves. Um, they've fought a lot of people. There's been a lot of wars. You're familiar with Yara Orin? It's this, like, ancient elven forest. It, its name literally translates to the ancient trees. Um, and it's a pretty big area. And you know that the Empire has expanded eastward, and that was in their path. And they overcame it. But the details, you know, it's a... You know, we're, we're talking... The scale of this this yeah. this growing empire is such that like you know there's a million details and who can possibly follow them all unless that's what you do. Uh, Sounds reasonable. Garpel, I will uh, say <clears throat> I'm sorry, Forrest, for your people, and I'm sorry to what happened at uh, Yara Orin. I have also lost in the past, and just want you to know that I feel for you. This is um, really odd, you know, there's a lot of changes here. There's a, a wizard who's had a personality transformation. You've got friends here that know each other but can't remember each other. I think we should speak yeah, about the this. The snows a bit more. have stopped too. It's this fucking crazy time. I don't want to impose on you here, Brutus, but, um, you know, I'm a bit wounded here. Is there any chance that we could use your house for the night? Lay low. Fuck no. You kidding? I'm not going to have you blow my cover. Everyone's out looking for, you know, the red-robed wizard who's bleeding and the, the bear and the, the frog with the glaive and the black cloak. There's enough of a risk even being here talking to you right now. You know anywhere safe? As you came. As far away from here as you can get. I'd head back. I'd head towards... Uh, I'd head towards Jaden or... I, I, away. As far away as you can get. What about how can we the oh, um the burned down house the wizard there you know anything about that no I, I I don't actually know anything about that one he says chuckling to himself what do you nope. mean you seem like there's more to it we can uh pay for information <laughs> I don't need your money he's the one who did it no, I wish I could claim all the credit. Why did you all do it? Because <coughs> if you guys aren't from around here, components, you're, components, you're from far away. That's they're right. evil. <laughs> yeah. So what? well. Something. Us meeting like this, your friend knowing me. Mm -hmm. You knowing, maybe, uh, the person I want to see dead more than anything in the world. There's definitely some sort of twist of fate here, but I don't know which way it's turning. And I'm not exactly ready to throw all of my cards on the table and share all my precious gems with you, so to speak. Why don't you tell me where this uh, autumn woman that you know lives? That seems... I mean, you, you want us to tell you so you can go kill her, yes? I don't think I can kill her. The thing is, is Autumn is her friend, and she's nothing like the person that you're speaking of. Well, see, so we, we got a, nothing a to trust hide. issue, right? I'd look over to Arrakis. Well, maybe we can... If Autumn is this... Maybe we can talk to her about it, Brutus. You'll be here in town, right? We could always come back we get some answers but I I think we're in the same boat as you maybe not quite ready to put all our cards on the table just yet you know the local militia is not all that great but when backup arrives you might not want to be seen around here again 
And, uh, well, uh, you stand out like a sore thumb. You stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and he points to the orc. And I'm very confused about you still. Where are you from? You keep saying far away, but where is that? I'm far uh, far, far away. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, but where? It's where, Growl? It's not. It's not that important. Uh, it's it's you very would, important. But you wouldn't know. It's you wouldn't know it. It's so far. Try me. I'm old. Oh, yeah. It's. What do I see in my <laughs> in my direct vicinity, Koivu? <laughs> uh, it's nighttime, so you see some grass and some trees and a prairie dog, I'm fr- uh, and I- the moon and the stars. Oh, wait, no stars because it's raining and no moon. Rao, you're what is... just with friends here. You can you can tell us. I, I, I'm, f- I'm just from very, very far, far away. It's, that's the name of the place. If our mm-hmm. friend Brutus here Frog. knew where you'd been over the recent years, perhaps you'd be able to work out where your paths might have crossed in the past. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so uh-huh. Mm. Well, I um don't I I don't know. It's um I just I I you know okay okay so, you know sometimes humans we see we we not know I'm orc um orcs or humans we say things it's it's and but it's not what what is. What is true, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well... I... Normally I say what is true, but... Some, sometimes people... Say... I'm, I'm not actually from far away. <laughs> <laughs> You're from around here, aren't you? Uh, I'm from, 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 the, from the forest. Just around the swamp i just live there i've always lived i think i i all i remember is being around the, the forest and there's things i don't remember and you know autumn told me that if if i don't remember it's maybe i can just say that it's that it's far away because people will sometimes ask me where i'm from and i'm not from a city or a town and people will think that that's weird right so i if if i want to get meat pies sometimes i just have to tell people that i'm from somewhere I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. So uh, going through a are lot you here. actually a bear? Uh, I don't. Um, such questions. What are is, you? I I. I look at him and I I nod. Yes. <laughs> how? How is it that you can take orcish and gnomish form, bear? I. That's... Growl. How how long have you been able to do that? The uh, sun. I I don't know. The sun goes up. The sun goes down. I, it's. You can't explain. You can't that. explain that. Stop. You're you're frustrating him, Arrakis. It's long, many many. I. It. it no, normally I I don't get as as much food, and I would have to go and sleep for a long time. But I've been getting lots of food since I can become like this. All um, right, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Uh, how many winters? Uh, oh, winter when it becomes cold. Yes, it's. Uh, it hasn't been winter in a long time here, Arrakis. Yes. What do you mean? What do you mean? It hasn't been winter. Don't see here. the snow around here anymore. You should have. Didn't just, you just hear forest? Just, uh, I, you know, I'm no meteorologist, <laughs> God, but just because it's not snowing doesn't mean it's not winter. Well, do you ever see the winter gods in the air? What? Winter gods? <laughs> what I, are you talking about? I don't. I Look, don't. I take that back. I don't know. It used to. S- this place was covered in snow for a long time. Summer, winter, spring, fall, completely blanketed in snow. A couple years ago? Well. Last year, really. Snow's melted. Anything else weird happen with that? At the same time, people start acting different? Maybe? He shakes his head. I wasn't necessarily here a year ago when all that went down. I'm more recent to the area. 
growl. That's a weird place, and times could are it, changing. Could that have been two years ago that you became aware? Two years. Two winters. Yeah. Maybe yes. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Yes. It's hard oh, to remember. Arrakis. The fucking bear moving here isn't gonna change the the meteorologist. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I, maybe something happened. Maybe there was some sort of magical event that caused that... Autumn's character to change, caused the snow to go away, caused the bear to become aware. Something like that would probably be pretty well known to everyone in the area, wouldn't it? I don't know. You know what they're like. They it seems keep, uh... weird that you don't remember the bear either. Yeah, I would remember a bear. Well, you're an elf, you know. You spend time in the forest. If you're not, you know, spent time with bears before. Maybe not ones that can't speak, but... If you... If a, a, a seven-foot-tall human with a red mohawk came up to you and said they knew you. And I said, well, haven't you spent time around humans? Maybe you didn't recognize him. Like, look at the, did you see the coloring on his fur? That's not a bear from around here. That's a bear from far away. This is from, yeah. But okay. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. I think, uh, Brutus, then maybe we've come to the end of how we can help each other for now. But, uh. I think so. You know, we appreciate you having this conversation. And you know, I wish you luck in your endeavors. You know, from You'll what keep... you from what you are saying, you know, I maybe when it when it was so this is a time I don't remember when it was a long, long time ago, maybe I was from far away where other bears like me are, I don't know, but there's things from that is my my head is different, right? It's I don't remember some things, but maybe if I smell a thing from back then, yeah. I I don't I don't remember eating acorn. But if I smell acorn, I would I know that I I used to probably eat acorn, maybe. And maybe it's like that with with you and me, Forrest. Maybe something happened to your head that there's things that you used to not remember, but now you can think about some different. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you're right. Our time has come to an end. Um, you're gonna keep my secrets, right? Or do I need yeah. to get the hell out of here? No, you can stay. We've got no reason to you know, bring anything down on your head. Like you said, right. you know, enemy of my enemy and all that. Right. Who is your enemy? <laughs> oh, there are so many of them. Uh, but what did you come to town for, if not for me? Why are you even here? Us? I wait for Arrakis. I think he's frozen. Oh, fuck. Um. Uh, uh, I, I think, think his he internet. Crashed. I think his internet died. Yep. Yeah. Well. Um. Uh, Autumn. She wanted. Uh. I look at. I look at. Um. The frog. She wanted us to come here, but not to to. He wanted. We wanted to look for. Um. Some. Oh, but then there was the fire, and ah, uh, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, there was there was the fire, and we couldn't get the stuff that uh, Autumn wanted us to get. I'm gonna be honest with you, Forrest. We were here to go and get magical components, and I'll reach into Arrakis's pocket and pull out the list, um, and hold it in my hand. And uh, here's the list right here. It's dark. The it's raining. You know, he's not going to be able to read the list very well like this. You were just in town to buy components and you happened to stumble across me. Yeah, and Grau uh, knew you. The gods work in mysterious ways, so I I don't think this meeting is chance. Hopefully next time it'll be under better circumstances. You should get out while you can. They're going to be looking for you. 
we're gonna leave and we won't be back for a long time um is there anything else you can tell me we're gonna go back to autumn and i will keep you out of my mouth to her mm. but is there anything i should be looking for anything else that you can tell me about yourself i i think by gods we're on the same side here There's a group of us. There's not very many. We swarm like flies, and we set fires. That's the name. So that's why people kept saying the fireflies did it. Yeah. Well, every time, any, <laughs> any place we can, we will. Against Ferasi, I assume? He nods. Or Against thinks for a second. All those who have wronged us. He'll hold out his hand. <sighs> uh, Forrest will reach out a hand and shake yours. You're a weird bullywug. <laughs> but if you're going to kill Verasi guardsmen, then you might be the very best bullywug I've ever met. Did they die? Only one of them. He says with a a sigh. So someone saved him. Some asshole bandaged the one. But, you know, he might not make it through the night, God's willing. He nods. The Rossi Empire does seem pretty bad, but I don't know if I'm a freedom fighter. <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. Well, neither am I. Just a local friendly terrorist doing my best. He nods. Um, that, I think yeah. he's done, and he's going to leave. Yep. And um, because one player's out, the other player's crashed, I think this is a great place to end our session. Um, I'm assuming the party's going to head back to Autumn's abode. Uh, I think so. And we'll, we'll pick up the campaign back at the tower, not next week, but the week after. If we're... Down to people. Should we maybe skip an after show today? Well, we'll yeah. see if Nick reconnects. But if not, I Nick's think... Nick's messaging me that he's his internet is fucked and not coming back till like, tomorrow. So Nice. Right. Here's one of the times. Here's why I said earlier that we usually do an after show. Um, I don't... There's questions for Nick. There's questions for the whole party that people want to hear about. So we will be back. Not next week, but the week after with more Save or Die Outcasts, where we will do an after show and answer all the questions from this time and the questions from next time. Um, so, yeah. Tune in then for when Potato McWhiskey comes back in his triumphant return. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, episode. Thanks for watching, Bye -bye. guys. Make sure to subscribe on Patreon to save Greenzerg's internet. <laughs> Everyone only... needs a little bit of saving. It'll only come back if you send us your credit card number and the three numbers on the back. We're out. Bye. Bye.